Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to a brand new series. I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits. Blood, sweat and tears is going to go into this series. This is the most ambitious undertaking I've ever done and it's the biggest series of videos I've ever done as well. I'm going to be building the ultimate mountain bikers van. I've always been interested in overlanding, camping, taking the family on holiday, off-roading, just being in the great outdoors. Slightly exhilarating. Watch your hand, make sparks! This, my friends, is Blake Builds Van Life, powered by Works Tools. So for this massive project, I'm going to need a little, well, maybe a lot of help from my friends. So first up, I've called upon my very good friend, Martin Jones. Martin is a mechanical guru who knows all that is needed to make this dream of mine happen. Secondly, I've also teamed up with one of the most respected power tools company out there, Works to make sure I've got exactly the right tools for the job. Drills and drivers, lights, angle grinders, saws and plenty more. I'm all tooled up and I'm ready to rock and roll and drill some holes. Right, first things first, let's find a van. Mr. Jones, yep. are you ready to help me find a van? Just gotta finish this game of Solitaire. Solitaire, minute, then. okay, cool. Well, I'll let you carry on with that. There's a few places you can look for a van. Uh, you can go to an auctions, you can go, uh, privately or you can go to some dealerships. For us, we're just gonna sit in this nice warm office and we're gonna scour the internet looking for the perfect van. And I got Mr. Jones to help me. You got oh. some ideas, haven't you? I've got some ideas, yeah. Let's have a look. We want a Porsche Panamera <laughs> GT. <laughs> we haven't got that much money. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. This Blake, is it. We have Blake Builds, all episodes complete and done in one video. No, yeah. We just buy this. This is going to pick it up. Look at that. Well, you, actually, it's like £50,000 plus VAT. That is I'm a bit steep. Uh, my budget doesn't even stretch that far. We digress. So let's go back Continue. to reality. Back to reality. Lowest price first. Lowest price first. <laughs> this is the one. <gasps> Private seller. So I have to do some. There's no checks. VAT included. No there. VAT. So I have to just do some checks when we get there. Hello, mate. Yes, I am ringing up about the advert you've got on uh, Auto Trader about your Ford Transit. Is this still available? Oh, amazing! Great. Thanks, John. Wicked. Wait. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Right. It's very far. Be it's fine. Like, it's like four hours away. We're gonna run out of fuel. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Right, today's the day we're going to go see a van. I'm so excited. We've seen a van, we've done a lot of hunting online, looking at so many different places where people sell their vans. So if we get there and it's like terrible, we got a three and a half hour drive back empty handed. But it's all part and parcel of finding the best van we can find for this build because uh, we don't want a rubbish one, man. We don't want a rubbish one. Got my grab bag, my kit so we can go and vlog the hell out of this and go look at this van. So just run B-roll of us just eating loads of snacks, driving on motorways, swapping driving and all that rad jazz and drinking, drinking a hell of a lot of, hell of, a lot of caffeine. Right, let's go. Taxi. Taxi, you Blake. <laughs> yeah, that's me. All right, we're off. We are 2.8 miles away from our destination, but we're nearly there. I can smell van. There it is. Right, we're switching to a smaller camera, more discreet. I'm no stranger to buying a second-hand vehicle, but Martin has given me a short list of things we need to check before buying a van. Some makes and brands have notorious issues. When looking for leaks, make sure you look in the engine bay and underneath the vehicle. 
Also oil there. Wear and tear on moving parts. A big one is rust and the bodywork. Yeah. Make sure you find one that's got as least rust as possible. Tires and suspension and service history is something that we need to check. You know what you're saying about brakes? Mm. These ones are right there. These aren't the same as the... They're not the same. Normally, no. Can't make a hell of a noise when you try. What do you reckon? Usually steering wheel. Definitely usually steering wheel. <laughs> oh yeah, look at it. Used to be this company's van. Initial. Cleaning products, like sanitizing van. So it's got a, a strong sense in the van of cleaning products. Pretty tidy looking van. I'll let Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones take it for a drive, obviously because he's more mechanically minded. He, that's his job. He's a mechanic and it's good. Little word of advice. If you have a friend that's quite mechanically minded and knows what he's looking for, get him to take the car for a drive because he will know everything. He works on these cars a lot. He'll know the steering, he'll know the clutch, he'll know the gearbox. He will feel like it'll, he'll make sure he knows what he's looking at, feeling what he's, anyway, he's driving the van. And I'm going to sit here. I trust Martin. I've known him for a few years. He is quite nerve-wracking buying a vehicle, especially if it's a lot of money. You're like, oh, is it going to be worth it? I sold my Jeep to buy a van, a big box van. <laughs> well, that's it, Martin. What have we done? Bought a Transit. <laughs> we bought a van. <laughs> We've pulled over just to look at the van and look at the cubby holes. It actually drives really well. I mean, obviously, what you do is look at all these things after you bought it. A little lucky like after you bought it, because then you might want it back. There might be some PX gold, they call it. P what what's that? Part exchange gold. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, it's not a part exchange, but it's the same thing. Oh, what's, oh what's oh, have you got? got? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's raining receipts. Got, what is that? Um, Lex Auto Lease. Looking after your tyres, that might be important for you. We've got here. Yeah, sure, used to Dude, it's it. still raining receipts. Oh, here we go. I'll put the jackpot. Wow. I'll hit the jackpot. This guy has not done his rec receipts. Oh! You got some riding gloves. Look at this. Freshies. Look at them. Jeez, do they fit though? I mean, I'm sorry if I was stealing them. You, you can have them. But it's still raining receipts. Mm. Guy went to Morrison's loads. Oh, Nope. Uh, nope. An unused towing eye, which is a rare sight on a Ford Transit. <laughs> oh, does that mean this is going to break down? <laughs> What's that? I mean, oh my god. I What's that? It. I wouldn't touch it. It's a noodle. It's a noodle. I tell you what, this yeah, van, this van smells incredibly sanitary, like clean. Yeah. But it needs a good clean. It does need a good clean. We've got so much to do. I mean, I'll just start. I'll start the job off with you. Here we go. I need to know that. We don't need that where we're going. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get even higher than what it says there. Yeah. We're back after a very long drive. We found the van, we've bought the van, we searched high and low for this van. This is the Ford Transit H3 L3 350. All those numbers and letters mean something when I was looking for a van to convert. Now, 350 stands for the capacity that this van can carry. It's a heavyweight van, so you can put a lot of weight in the back, which is a good thing because we are gonna put a lot of weight in the back. Now, H3 is high three. It's a high top, it's the highest van you can get, L3 means it's a long wheelbase. You can get an L4, which is a jumbo, but it's, that's massive. And I don't want to be driving a humongous van around. I thought this was the best one. This is a front wheel drive van as well, which is a good thing. 
Why? Because if you were to buy a rear wheel drive van, you're basically losing this much headroom in the rear. Here's an example of that. There you go, rear wheel drive van. You lose that much. Front wheel drive van, look at that difference. See, that is a rear wheel van. This front wheel, it's in clean condition. There's a few scratches here and there. I've actually stuck a dent in it already. Welcome to van life, Mr. Sampson. <laughs> Put a dent in it. There we go. Javan is the name of this van. Why? Well, Jeff the van, Jeff the Jeep. I sold Jeff the Jeep to buy this. There you go, Javan. Right, let's get our hands oily because we're going to be digging around in the engine bay because there's a hell of a lot of lights on my dashboard. Looks like a Christmas tree. Okay, so got the van in the garage, but there's one thing that M Martin does not like. Listen to this, ready? He does not like that sound. And actually, to be honest, I don't like that sound either. So we're gonna cut that wire right now. I think what it is you gotta do is do that. <laughs> and I think now if you go and try it again, see what happens. Okay, let's go and try that again. No more noise. Let's get this outside because uh, we've got a few codes on here that need to be addressed. So what are we doing, Martin? We're doing a DPF regen. I just need the corner temperature to be a bit higher, but DPF regen is pretty normal. I think it's because it's got that 70 mile an hour limit on the back. We need to remove that. We need to remove that, yeah. Are well, we going to remap this thing? We're going to make it faster. It just needs to be a bit hotter. What's the temperature there? It's uh, in the middle, and it's got that. Gone. Engine light off, nothing to worry about. Now it's sat at two and a half thousand revs. The computer's doing all the work, basically gonna clean out the exhaust. It can take up to 50 minutes. Yeah. That means that exhaust's gonna get so red hot and hopefully clean out the gunk out of that catch fire. And hopefully not catch fire. Hey, 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 we just bought the van. Look at that, it's always nice when it says that. Oh yes, tick. Caught you. With the list as long as my arm of things to fix, we better get dug in and get our hands all greasy, man. Because this is gonna be a steep learning curve for me. Timing chains, dead. Always wanted to do one of them. Right, let's see what it looks three. like, yeah. Here we go. Here we go, the other way. That's it. Oh, oh that's where I left uh, it. it anyway. <laughs> Pull that way, yeah, I got yeah. it, I got it, yeah. Right. Right, we're gonna see what the inside of this engine looks like. Gonna change the oil. Do the timing chain. Do the timing chain, see what the air filter looks like. Um, do bits and bobs to it. By the way, this is Martin, if you don't know Martin, Innovate Automotive. I've been here a few times, we built a bike rack bike together. Rack, yeah. We've done a few things together. Everyone will remember that. Yeah, everyone. Right. But we're gonna take the whole front off because we're gonna change some of this as well. So take, the... well take all this off now, make it easy for ourselves. Take it all off. And I've got to fix this front bumper. And... You have got to fix the front bumper. Yeah. Right, let's, so uh, let's, uh, let's get oily. Let's get oily. First bolt out. Four clips. And we've broken one already. I'll just have you know, Blake broke it. Definitely wasn't me. Blake definitely did this. Don't need this bit. This <laughs> is so where we find out it's been in a crash. So we've, take, we've taken the bumper off, so we can get to the side of the engine a lot easier yeah, instead the of going through easier. there. Yeah. The bumper had to come off anyway because we've treated, we've got to repair the front bumper and we've got to wrap to it. So once the bumper's all done, it makes sense to take off at the same time. It's yeah. so much easier rather than reaching through this tiny little tiny gap. Tiny little gap. Now got all this, this room around here. Amazing. You can see the side of the engine. That's the air box. 
We should see what that looks like because we'll pop it open. I feel like that's going to be uh, something of a surprise in there. I wonder when it's been done. Because he said it was serviced. He did. He did. <laughs> I mean, that's not so good, that's is it? That's not good. Look at it. I think we need a new one. Hold on a minute. Oh, you got one already. That's what, what that? it's supposed to look like. Not like that. Done. Service complete. Finished. Finished. If you want your van serviced. Blake's van servicing services. Blake builds van service. Blake builds van services. <laughs> That'd be a big t-shirt. Yeah. So we're just checking brake pad wear, but you've got a wear sensor anyway, so the light would come on. But you can see the actual backing of the brake pad. It's quite a meaty pad, isn't it? Yeah, thickness. I mean, you can see the, wear, the plastic wear indicator. Let me get a do driver. The wear indicator is actually there that you can see it comes out. So you've actually only got a millimetre, two millimetres of brake pads left for the wear indicator. Two millimetres equals 2,000 miles? Mm, yeah, it depends on how you drive. So now we've got to do this. Get that pulley off. Yeah and taking this cover off the timing chain, access inside, change that. Because it looks like it hasn't been changed. <laughs> On inside the headlight. Yeah, it looks really good. Very interesting in there. What makes my wheels go around? With yeah. my timing chain, my oil changed, and my air filter swapped out and all done, it was just time for my diesel filter left. This would hopefully be the last thing we do to the engine before we start yeah. the exciting bits. Okay, I got a step here. That's a bit redundant, so I'm going to remove it because it doesn't re it doesn't work. Try to fix it. I thought it would be handy, but it doesn't work. So I'm going to take it off. Saving weight, man. You're welcome. Do you want it for your van? All right. Look at that. He just threw it up. <laughs> Over there. Oh, we don't need that. Biscuits. I love biscuits, right? Whilst we wait for some parts to be delivered, I'm going to adjust, address my rear end. I don't like this bumper. It looks disgusting. Very industrial. And one way to take your shins out. So I'm going to remove them. And it's got parking sensors in it, which I might take out and relocate them in my bumper. So I've got them, so I don't hit anything on the back. But I am going to replace that light up there. It comes with a camera in it when I'm reversing. So don't really need the parking sensors. Anyway, I'm going to remove this ugly thing so it looks nice and slick. Take one more bottle, one more bottle out, come on. Oh. Oi! <laughs> yep, it's off, watch this. Ooh, look how much more sexier that looks. That thing weighs a ton. I was so scared it was gonna drop on me, but it didn't. with diesel everywhere. Oh! <laughs> Dude, brah! Oh, no! In you go. In you go. Oh, wow, look how dirty that is. So much diesel in there. Oh, it's everywhere. Now, that should just 
pop off. Oh, it just fell off. <laughs> One diesel filter. Should have put gloves on. They shall wash them straight away. This is the new boy. New guy. Look how dirty this one is. It is moist, but it is, uh, yeah, diesel going everywhere. And you want to put a bit of oil on that. <laughs> Who would have thought you'd be subscribing to GMBN to watch mountain biking? We're doing some car van maintenance. All for a good cause though, man. This thing carries around our pride and joys and takes us to where the, the fun is. That's what I'm doing. Building something to take more fun with me. All right. All right. Uh, you, ready? you ready, Blake? Ready. Oh, it sounds so much smoother. No rickety tickety 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 noise. That, my friends, is a sweet motor. <laughs> what? Well, 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 that's my first ever timing chain I've ever done. Yeah. All on, on your own? Well, with a bit of hand, obviously. It's got fresh oil, fresh diesel filter, fresh oil filter, fresh air, air filter, filter, chain. We've got to top up a few levels, double check everything. Ready put to a, go. Put a front end on. That's it. That's it. We bought a van. Lake Bill, what yeah, are you building next? Well, well <laughs> mate, we, we've got so much to do. This is right at the beginning of us finding a van, buying a van, fixing a van, going over it with the help of Martin. And uh, next episode is all about the rear end of this van. Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to a brand new series. I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits. Blood, sweat and tears is going to go into this series. This is the most ambitious undertaking I've ever done and it's the biggest series of videos I've ever done as well. I'm going to be building the ultimate mountain biker's van. I've always been interested in overlanding, camping, taking the family on holiday, off-roading, just being in the great outdoors. Slightly exhilarating. Watch your hand, make sparks! This, my friends, is Blake Builds Van Life, powered by Works Tools. Welcome back, you beautiful people. Welcome to episode two of Blake Builds the Van. I'm converting the van into uh, a camper for epic adventures to take my family, my friends, and my mountain bikes out there into the wilderness and just have some great times. But we are so far away from that point. This is episode two, and it's all about the rear of this van because in the back of this van, come with me, is full of things that I don't want in there. All of this, this, this needs to come out, this needs to come out, and there's more stuff inside, come with me. All of this on the walls needs to come out, which is gonna be painstaking hard, drilling all these screws out. But we need a bare shell. That needs to come out because I don't want that there. The big black thing at the end there, that's a bulkhead. That needs to come out because those chairs in the front are gonna be swivel seats. But episode two is a destructive one, but a productive one, right? Right, <laughs> let's, let's, let's just, just get all this stuff up. I don't want it in ya. <laughs> okay, we've got opening. Taking that one off. The door is way bigger. Stoked about that. I just gotta get this out. This stuff, man, is just... Oh, it's just terrible, man. That one's out. That gonna come out now. I was so used to just getting in like probably 700 mil to get in, but man, that is a 
is a big door. More destroying, actually, my favorite tool for the job at the moment is this guy right here, the screwdriver. It was an impact driver, but there's so many screws in here and I just need to unscrew all these plates and get rid of it. And then this one's like a, a massive torque spin. It's like not a T25, man, it's something bigger. T25 is something that you put on your disc brakes. That's something industrial. All right, let's get moving. <laughs> <laughs> now that is so easy to come out, just one piece of a wall. Woo! I'm just gonna have to cut it in half or something. Look at it. I'm going to uh, just smash it. Last bit. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Get my neck. Done. Under there, what's the expire? Whoa! Yeah. 14th of the 4th, 2019. Oh no, it's gone all white. Look, oh dude, it's just crumbly. Smells like chocolate, it smells like really old chocolate. <laughs> Cleared out of the van. Just adds so much more room. I've taken everything out. I reckon I could sleep that way. I got a cool idea where you, um, well actually Martin said, people kind of just board off the van and you lose so much space from in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insulate it obviously, but then keep it quite close. So I can potentially sleep this way with Jen, with my wife, and then the little dudes can sleep down there. Ah, oh, so much more room. I still gotta try and get these things off the foot wells. It's all coming up, all coming up. And I'm gonna do some welding. Woo! Let's see how long the bike right. is. I'll put that in there. So Say about there, let me... Shut the door. Shut the door and see. Yeah, there's loads of room. Just yeah. because if I have a longer bike... Yep. It might, yeah. But then so we can adjust it. We have adjustable front. fork mount on the yeah. front anyway. So what we're doing right now is measuring how long we need to make the bed. Obviously, because the garage needs to be a certain size to hold bikes in. We're gonna try and squeeze four bikes in here on a big drawer system, but yeah. we've got a cool way of doing it because we want to have two drawers, sliders, basically two bikes on one, two bikes on another. And if you don't want to carry four bikes, you can have one for luggage if you're going further afield and two bikes. And the bikes will be offset, offset. and there'll be different heights. So the handlebars yeah. won't hit each so other. So they won't hit each other. If we make the framework on the top for the bed, then yeah. make the framework for where the seats are going to be yeah. and where the kitchen is going to come around. Yeah then we can make everything else around that. Around that. Um, we don't want to make the mistake of making the bed, making the garage, and then can't fit anything else in. Can't fit anything else Plus, in. Plus wiring-wise, we need to get it to a point where we can get, we know where all the plugs and where yeah. the switches and everything are going to be. Because there's going to be a light in the garage. There's going to be switches in the garage for external lights. We're going to have a, a combi boiler, hot, hot water. water boiler system in here. We've got See. two batteries, so we'll have a leisure battery there and one over there. An inverter in the rear. Yeah, one. Well, the one that side will run the garage side of it, so that's all separate. Yeah. This one will run the interior of the van. Yeah. And then we'll keep the van itself separate from all of it. Yeah. But that that's like coming episodes of wiring because that's yeah, like a jump, whole jumping, thing. That jumping I've ahead of ourselves. Done. I've never done it, so um, it's a big steep learning curve. But welding, I'm so excited to get welding. The floor needs to come out as well. Yeah. But let's yeah measure up and draw. Let's do that. drawing it, rough sketches. This is what it's all about. Just on bits of card. We've got our brains working. We just need to order this steel now, which is just down the road. So we're gonna go do that. The time we spend now making sure that we get everything to fit, 
will yeah. make it better in the long oh, run. Because, yeah, and if you start doing it quickly, you miss you something, end, you or miss you end something. up in an area where the seat doesn't fit, or you can't go. And headache. The steel that we're going to be using for the main structure is this box section. It's three mil thick. I think it's very strong. It's not going to move when I sit on it, or all of us sitting on it. And then the little benches around here, the L-shaped bench is going to be made out of this steel, which is, again, it's three mil as well, but that's strong enough. Because we don't want, if we, if we ever have a crash, all this stuff shifting forward into us, and oh, we just don't want that. Martin said that, we don't want it. So safety is key. Going a bit overkill with this structure. Plus you don't want it to move because the van is going to be twisting and turning on the road. Um, so we don't want it to creak and yeah, because that'll be annoying. So I'm going to go order all of the steel. Yeah, boy, yeah. <laughs> Destroying it, I know, but, get it off. but that's, look, that there, that's a hell of a dent, what that's gonna do. Well, hit it back with a hammer. What's happening here, Blake? Well, we've got to a point where I don't want to dent the van, even though it's gonna be covered up. But you could see it from out, like, in the, I don't know. This is stuck on there, rock solid. Just and mastic it on so you can't get it off. Can't get it off. But we're using these against the bodywork, like the steel, and it's just, I got a just killing, destroying I'm trying to stuff. tell the man up a little bit, just do it. Come Wait, on. look, you just keep, oh, you it's just dented. Dirty, like, I've just dented my car, my van. It's fine, we can fix it. How? It's not the first time you've dented it. No, it's oh, not. Oh, no, up there. Up there, yeah. Which you've seen already, but ah, panic. If you haven't, it's there. Yeah. Oh, dude. When did that happen, bro? Was that the day you picked it up? It was the first day, the yeah. day I picked up and got home, I've yeah. dented the van. Got it back in one piece and then I reversed had, into your own house. Yeah, I had to laugh it off. Yeah. I reversed into my you house. You didn't laugh when you rang me, to be fair. No, I didn't. I think there was tears coming out, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Oh, look how much of the van we've pulled out. We're going to have to hit that back in. Yeah, big hammer. Fapping egg. Simon. So what we're doing right now is entering the brain, aka brain surgery, aka remapping and removing all the speed limiter. So the speed limiter. Most transits have got a speed limiter from the factory. Yeah, which is only for Germany purposes only when Obviously, we're allowed to yeah. uh, go on the autobahn not on, not on with the, my um, aka uh, Sprintagini. Sprintagini. Yeah. So I got that from. Transrari. Elliot Heap, nuke proof enduro rider. Elliot Heap, he has a uh, Sprintagini and he said to call this a Transagini or some tran Trangini. Oh, I've gone. Anyway, that was that, a cool that, story. Yeah. Let's remap this. <laughs> They scratched the van. Oh, oh, you need to calm yourself oh, down. It's ridiculous. Gee, I can't handle it. Blake, what happened? Huh? What happened? Oh, you yeah. love this thing more than Jeff. I do, yeah. I have weird. It is weird. Well, I can take my family in it and we don't have but to like... all this is being covered up, so oh. don't worry about the floor. Lunatic. All that 130 quid is an absolute bargain. That's a bargain. So the hardtail built was 125 pounds, but we're building living quarters yeah. for 130 quid. But that's just the framework. Yeah, we probably don't want to tell people it's 130 quid, do we? Because they're, they're our special friends. Yeah, the thing is when you know people, you can get good deals. Or stuff for free. Or for free. free. It's not for free, is it? Or work for it. I meant me. You. <laughs> 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 right, 
right, first beam going in. One, seven, five. We've welded our first goal post. Now we're gonna grind this bit of welding down. Don't freak out. We have to because we need to put this next piece of box section flush with this one so we can weld it on. So we've got the other bit. That's what I'm gonna do right here. I've been told by mine, because you're welding upside down, the gases are gonna hit, because this is gas fed through this nozzle here, and then the white, and it melts and it arcs, blah, blah. But the gas hits, but then comes back. Because when you're welding like this, it'll hit and then go away. So when it's upside down, it'll hit and build up like a little mountain top. We don't want that. Plus it just drops really hot bits everywhere. So I mean, <laughs> here it goes. <laughs> Look at that! There's going to be a lot of... I like that we're using the box and not using Pegasus to hold them. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get Pegasus out? We could do, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I mean, is it, is it plastic? Oh, yeah. Will it's it plastic. melt as quick as the box will? I mean, get it, out, get it out of the box, we'll do it. I mean, we got complained that last time for working on the floor, at least we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to bolt it or just weld it in? What do you reckon? The fuel tank's right there, so you drill holes through, you've got to be a bit careful. Yes, weld it. All right, it's getting dark, look at that. It's dark out there. And inside the van, it's not very light just yet. But hey, these work floodlights are gonna work an absolute treat. Flooded this whole place up. <laughs> we'll be going till I she shutting. I don't know and I don't care. Probably like 1 a.m. Beautiful. Look at that! Woo! Take the earth off. Let's try it. Oh man. It's like it grew there. I reckon it's time to go home. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Yes, next day. This is, uh, we've already started. We've already started welding. The structure in there for the bench. You'll be carried away, sorry, mate. Yeah, we got we just straight on it. Woke up, it's uh, 8 a.m. Straight on to it because we need to get this done because oh, basically I'm going away. Martin's going on holiday, so we're trying to get this part of the van done so we can start the wiring. Which whew, it's going to be a, a steep learning curve for me. So Mr. Jones is going to help me. He's going to show me the ropes or show me the wires, <laughs> and then we're going to do that. <laughs> do, you like, do you like that? It's so rubbish. What is? You're going to show? It's not ropes. It's too early for that. <laughs> it is too early. Right, let's run montage of just welding this thing together and getting it in. Test it out. It's not going anywhere. Definitely solid. The garage is complete inside there. Well, the frame, the structure. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to the bench here, which is going to have uh, seat belt mounts and isofix for kids' seats because I've got a child. We've done a lot. Without people thinking this is far too strong, it's um, we've done it for a reason because this is important with the weight in the back. If anything ever happens, that's just going to transfer straight to the van. Yeah. One thing I want to point out, 
is the teacher, my master, is a good teacher. This man right here. Look at my impeccable weldings now. It's technique that I learned from him, but I guess it's the machine, because my little guy, I don't think will yeah, be able Yeah, it makes a big to... difference. But yeah, basically, before you were welding on top of the metal, now you're burning into the metal, which is what you meant to do. So, I'll give him a gold star. Yes! Pat on the back. I'll, you, I'll make you a certificate later. So we've tacked the bench in, so it's a two-seater. Uh, that's all tacked in and ready to rock and roll. But before I just start going welding all that up, I'm gonna have a break, cup of tea, because look what Ben's just bought. <laughs> yeah. A selection of goodies. Right, cup of tea, and then I'll just... Voila, we are finished. The frame for the garage, the bed, the bench is in. I was a hell of a lot of welding. My welding did take, uh, went south near the end, which is okay. Uh, you're not gonna see it, which is fine. That structure there is so solid in the van, it's not gonna move. It looks overkill, but I feel like it needs to be. Martin Jones thinks it needs to be. Talk about Martin before we end this episode. Look at this, look at this guy. What are you? <laughs> Next, coming up on Blake Bills, Blake gets a haircut. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I shaved my pip again. We'll see you in the next episode. See ya! Welcome back, you beautiful people, and welcome to a brand new series. I'm gonna be showing you snippets of my whole <laughs> journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits. Blood, sweat, and tears is gonna go into this series. This is the most ambitious undertaking I have ever done. And it's the biggest series of videos I've ever done as well. I'm gonna be building the ultimate mountain biker's van. I've always been interested in overlanding, camping, taking the family on holiday, off-roading, just being in the great outdoors. Slightly exhilarating. Watch your hand, make sparks. <laughs> This, my friends, is Blake Builds Van Life, powered by Works Tools. So for this massive project, I'm gonna need a little, well, maybe a lot of help from my friends. So first up, I've called upon my very good friend, Martin Jones. Martin is a mechanical guru who knows all that is needed to make this dream of mine happen. Secondly, I've also teamed up with one of the most respected power tools company out there, Works, to make sure I've got exactly the right tools for the job. Drills and drivers, lights, angle grinders, saws, and plenty more. I'm all tooled up and I'm ready to rock and roll and drill some holes. Welcome back you beautiful people. This is episode three of Blake Builds Van Life sort of situation. Uh, this is how far we've got with framework. So this episode is all about finishing the framework for the kitchen, this little bed that we're gonna make for the little ones and uh, start the wiring, which is gonna be electrifying. <laughs> While I've been super busy, Martin's bought a van, but his van needed a bit of attention to say the least. It has some bodywork damage and a blown engine. So he's got his work cut out and I'll help where I can. The time lapse is making it look so easy and quick. <laughs> We've been doing this for like probably an hour and a bit. Yeah, it's about an hour. But it's taking an engine out of a vehicle. There's a few awkward bolts. Oh, yeah, there's some awkward ones, but we're nearly there. We've got the crane out. We can lift this out and then we can go and start doing the kitchen in that. Okay, I'm gonna explain what we're doing. Just over there, all this steel is for this last little bench at the back. But this is gonna be a pull-out bit for another bit of a, a bed to make it a little bit bigger. And I'll explain, look at this. That's gonna 
It's gonna slide in there like that. Obviously not there, but I'm using this as an example. We're gonna use this small box that's gonna slide through one of these, through there, three little boxes through another box, and then you just pull it out, and then you can double the size of the bench that you're sitting on. So that's the idea of all of this. And we've come up with that. I think it's pretty good. I think it's good. And you just use the backrest from this chair, and you put it down here, which is the perfect size for an extra bit. Pretty clever, huh? And let's get welding. Right, before I carry on making this bench just down here, with Martin is, we're gonna sketch on the van where we want, well, where I want sockets and the wires. Basically, bed area, you're gonna have at least two USBs, I suggest one either side. Yeah. And you want the switches to turn the lights on and off. Yeah. And you want a switch to turn the heat on and off. I'll Separate S. light switch. And then we're gonna have a main switch. Heater switch. Yeah, and a main switch. And a mains switch. So you know you can turn the whole the whole van on and off inside here if you need to. Okay. U S B. And that'd be USB C and normal USB as well okay. in the same picture. So we have one of those there and one back there. Yeah, so back there. Ow! <laughs> US B. <Yeah. laughs> this is over now where the wire is put there. Right? We'll have little probably so two, two spotlights. Two spotlights underneath. Now up here, you're gonna charge all of the... Yeah, so I wanna have camera charging equipment in one of these one cupboards of these. up here. So if we put two USBs in here, yeah, which will be USB and USB-C, so two of them. So we have the main control panel up here. Yeah. So in the garage, right, we're gonna have one big flood square light in the middle. Light. That. <laughs> Pump. Like that. Right, this is, this is getting complicated wiring down there for the heater. Yeah, the heater. so we got a diesel heater to go in, which we've kind of made fit for it. We've got two batteries going on. We've got one there, obviously, and one behind me. Both will be fed by solar, both will be split charged. Yeah. Um, but one will be primarily all the draw for the interior of the van, and the other one will be used for the garage. Garage. We're gonna have solar panel up there, 300 watt. It's got okay. the ability to flip between the two, so it's got a battery balancer. Yeah. So it can keep both batteries the same rather than overpowering one. And we're going to run extra wires just in case we want to put an extra Add socket yeah. somewhere, and then we would label it within the wire where it goes. Yeah. Enough of that. Let's draw a diagram. Let's. Uh, we've got to do a little shopping list because we can order it now and it'll be here tomorrow, which is good. Talking about shopping, let me do a quick breakdown on costs so far. Servicing the van cost me £200 with the help of Mr Jones. Steel so far has cost me £239, which is a lot less than wood. Windows, 301 a lot more than I thought. The fridge cost me £299. I went for the biggest one I could find, with the most room and I've ordered some of the wiring, which turns out is very expensive. And this has come in at 570 pounds. There's still loads more I need to order regarding the wiring. So far with all of that, including the van cost, it's brought it up to 8,609 pounds. And that price will continue to climb, but I'll keep you updated on how much it's cost me till the end. Okay, excuse the roar, that's the heater. Um, next bit is this piece that I'm gonna pull out to double the size of this bench. So I'm gonna build this frame out of smaller tubing. That's why these holes are all like that. Those holes are there so I can push in the other bits of steel. Give it some old legs like this so you can go down onto the floor. Let's do that, let's get some cutting, measuring, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, let's do that bit more, bit more welding. Okay, this is the uh, the front edge of the pull-out bed. Now I want it to be super snug. Get in there. Oh, okay. Look at that. So that's flush there, flush there. A little bit of room in there for some welding. 
Woo! I actually, I actually need that so I can go weld it all together. Let's go out here. You know, we took that engine out of this van, Martin's van. Look at this. <laughs> he's like, as he's happier than a kid in a candy store, this guy. Every Look at it. I can find. What's that? Just every bow I could find, I did every single one. Look at the state of it. Stuff everywhere. Oh my gosh, look at all. I would not know where any of that went. It's a nice clean engine bay rebuilding environment. I know already where everyone can play. Yeah, don't, yeah, just like the... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as it goes in perfectly yeah. and it works and it runs. We run into Boom. Come, 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 look at, come look at this welding. Man, you'll be chuffed with this welding. Look at this. So I did do stage by stage because I was a bit worried I'd go off, offline, but I think that was good. I've uh, welded all around here. All this is welded. I've welded it to the floor. I had to like bridge it there. That's welded, that's welded. That's, that's, not, that's not going anywhere. This is the bed framework. It's, uh, it was a little tricky one, but it works. Look. <laughs> that is genius. So this is Martin's van. Obviously, we're doing a did a thing on it. The van. I'm going to show you the back of his, because it's going the same sort of thing. He got a bit uh, left out. Now you can see the bikes are in here, perfect. So this one here is a little bit lower than mine, but I'm gonna point something out, look at this. Now if you're on a budget and you had a three-seater van in the front like there, three seats, so you got two seat here and a one seat there, excuse the mess, you can actually put the double from the front there if you wanted to take some friends. Now look at that, perfect. You, you can just build a frame for it, weld it and bolt it in there and then you've got your seats. Whereas for me, I needed to make some seats. Plus you can't really turn that into a bed really. So we've built that, but that is a good way of uh, cutting the cost down. So you're getting this double seat out and you can place it in the back over there. Anyway, enough rambling. I'm gonna continue this bit right here on the floor, the kitchen. I'm gonna remove this seat because we're gonna start the wiring. Oh, yeah. These are hard. Oh. Now look at that. That's why it's so, it took so long to get out. It's because this bolt bolts through the, through the chassis, through the floor of the van, and then just goes outside and it gets caked in rust and dirt and that. And you gotta drag all that through the, through the threads. If you had an older van, there would be a nightmare to get out for sure. Done. I've got one more bolt, I think. Oh yes. This, I need to uh, address this because this on the outside is not going to work because it just looks ugly. Martin says to move it, and I agree. We want to tuck it all in the voids of the van, so up here. And that's the plan, isn't it? I can't just go and cut it because we don't know where wires will be going. Well, you need to open up and see the colours, but have you shown how many wires are actually in that massive box? What, what the hell? Well, 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 all of that room, it's ridiculous. And you got that much of a little wiring loom. Well, um, yeah, if you cut it, get rid of that. Cut it, tuck it away, and it'll make it much neater then when you finish the rest of the van. Yeah. This is probably one of the first things I bought <laughs> because when I bought the van, I drove home and uh, you know, van life and that, look what I done. 
a huge dent. So that's probably one of the first things I bought. I was like, I need one of them right now. Need one, need one now. So I've installed it, but I'm doing it now. So, because we actually need to run the cables for it. You can't install that when you've done all the inside because that means your wires are going to be, oh, anyway. Reversing camera in. Right, so I've removed the uh, wiring from all around there. It's all on my lap. Um, but now I've got to cut it and then feed it. But instead of me just cutting the cable and then I don't know what wire goes to which wire, I don't want to make a mistake. So I've come up with this idea. It's going to take a while, but I'm going to tape the wires like this. So one, one, so I know one will go to one, two will go to two, and so on. So as soon as I've marked it just like this, I'll snip it. And then I know when I come to joining them again, one will go to one. Probably a very long way of doing it, but I will know that the cables will go together in the right order. Let's carry on. So look at that, we've got rid of all of that um, conduit where the cable was running externally in the van, but I had to cut it in two sections. I had to cut the back and feed it round because I didn't want to kind of come out there. So I've hidden it all behind there. It's taken me ages cutting my hands and slicing it. Got to this section right here where I need to join this to this one. Okay. I've worked out because I've pulled the cable, it's not I haven't got an, it's not all the way down on the bottom there because I've pulled it all back. I've worked out I need a meter extra. I got 30 little cables that I need to connect together. It's 30 meters of cable I need to do. That's one whole roll. That's a lot of cable. But the reason I've done that is because it's tidier and also now I'm, when I put my units up here, I'm not gonna have to work around a cable and just make it look, try and hide that. Right, 30 meters. This, friends, is like a mechanic's nightmare when you're working on bikes with internal routing <laughs> cables. Oh, look. Oh, look. Look. See ya? You like a bit of fishing though, don't you, babe? Fly fishing. Not pike fishing, that's boring. But this sort of fishing is great. Oh my gosh. Moment of truth, my wiring. Oh, yes. That's a top one? Yeah, it's working. I can see it. Look. Look at that. I'm an electrician. Uh, reverse light. Where's reverse? Don't, don't you start mine. I'm being serious. All right. Well, maybe I haven't connected that one. I'm freaking out, mate. What's the matter? Freaking out. The bulbs are all right. Show me how you put it in reverse. What are you doing? Clutch, yeah. Obviously. You don't have to push the clutch not running, but that's first, mate. You gotta lift, you gotta lift it up. You gotta lift it up. Oh. Lift the thing up. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about it. I bet it's working now, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh, I, don't, I don't even if I need that. Ah, that is hilarious. The lights do work. They do work. This one that. Well it's done. In my hand. <laughs> that is brilliant. Ah, uh, I forgot oh, to lift the knob. Look. I was freaking out, man. I thought I 
pop with some wires and feel like an absolute tool. Absolute tool. Right, let's pull this back on. <laughs> Fridges in, but I need to work out my kitchen height, which is going to be 900 because that's the same height as the kitchen in my house. So I'm going with that, plus the 20 mil for my worktop. So put this piece of wood in here. I'm going to cut some angle iron. I'm using angle iron so I can mount my work, you know, my fascias to it nicely. Plus I'm not using wood and I'm not using screws, which screws and wood tend to move and creak so this is going to be solid i'm going to cut 900 high three of them two for the front and one for this side so i can mount this fascia too and then i'm going to run some bars across the top to mount the worktop so i'm going to cut those now Because my welding's impeccable, I destroyed the air tip of this, didn't I? Yeah, welding too much of an angle, holding it too much of an angle, so yeah. it, it basically burnt that off instead of actually physically welding the metal. But don't worry, I we bought have another new one. one, just in case I do the same to that one. Wrong. Oh, go. Look at that. And then they've got another tip as well. Blake was here. We could frame all this stuff at the end of it if you want. <laughs> You need that whole wall. Just frame it all up. <laughs> yeah, there's a piece of metal we cut raw. Right, it's, you know, actually there's six over there. I mean two yeah, over one, there. Yeah. Two, the reverse light's working now. The bloopers are going to be incredible. Look at that. Now we've got an open fridge, which is ideal because we. <laughs> And those beers are flowing anyway. But we've made it wider. It opens yeah, I know. So it didn't. <laughs> yeah. But now it's wider, which is good. But we can't finish it just yet. No. Because we're waiting on bits to come in the post. That fit not the top, so we need to be yeah. able to make sure they fit in properly. We need the cooker and we need the um, sink. sink. What has turned up? Go on. Come on. Right. <laughs> Look, Look what's turned up, Martin. Camper glass, windows. I can't put them yet. Why not? So I'm thinking of installing my windows because they've just come and I'm excited to cut big holes in my van. One here and one over there. Pretty soon I'm going to leave you to this, I think. Oh, what? I might leave you to it. You're not going to help? No. I've never cut a hole in a van. You'll be fine. Even you can't mess this up, mate. Oh, <laughs> I just messed that up. If we've got a welder, we can fix it, don't worry. <laughs> Have you got That's any, fine. like, body filler? <laughs> you got you body filler. Than, you mess this up, you need more body filler. Uh, right. Productive. How does it feel putting holes in the van? Slightly exhilarating. Don't you think? I'm slightly worried about how much, you, how excited you are. Sorry about drilling holes in your van. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm stoked, dude. Stoked. Like a campfire that this is going to be parked next to one day when it's done. On fire. On. <laughs> yeah. Well, with my wiring. The wiring yeah. After my wiring, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, um, can I get a 99 with a flake? Times two, please? No. Well, that's the end of episode three. It's been a little bit sporadic because I've been waiting on bits and bobs that have come through the post. Like I haven't got my worktop or my sink or my cooker, so I can't really finish this bit off. 
which is okay, it's van life, these things happen, you're waiting for post. But this did come through the post, not this man right here. What's up, you beautiful people? Not that, the window, the window came through the post and I was like, man, man, I have to cut a big hole in my van and put this in. So I've got this one, I'm still waiting for the one for the sliding door, that's still coming. Got this done, got the, I started a bit of wiring, talk about wiring. In the next episode, it's going to be all about wiring, but I'm going to focus more about the garage because that's where all the wiring is going to be going. So that's going to be episode, f episode four. Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to my van build series. I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits and not to forget all my mistakes as well. I've literally messed up. Blood, sweat and tears is going to make this the ultimate mountain bikers van. This is my most ambitious project I've ever done. At a young age, I've always been into camping, overlanding and mountain biking. Now it's all about taking my family on adventure and just being in the grey outdoors. This, my friends, is Blake Bill's van life, powered by Works Tools. Welcome back, you beautiful people. Welcome to episode four of Blake Bill's The Craziest bike van ever. Now this one episode is going to be exciting, it's going to be electrifying, yes. Look at what we've got to already, but it's going to be all about wiring, I'm going to sort out the garage, more big holes in my van, and a boiler. Yeah, I'm going to put a boiler in the back of my van so I can have a shower outside. Like <laughs> it's all coming up, stay tuned. First on the agenda today is sort out the back of this span, the garage. I've got two leisure batteries, one's going to go there and one's going to go over here. And then all my wiring stuff is going to happen inside the garage, not in my living space but in here, hidden away. So that's going to be all situated up there, I've got to build some shelves and have some shelf in here, some storage and then you can see I've written on the van in previous episodes what I'm going to be putting in here, so fuse box and stuff which I feel like I'm gonna put it over there this time. Two inverters, one here and one here. You're probably thinking that's nuts, but I do have an e-bike and I've got friends with e-bikes, so I want to be able to charge an e-bike in the back of the van whilst I'm driving along. Oh, yeah, I love this sausage roll. Thank you. Did you make these? Yeah. Oi! It's not right, it's crack on. <laughs> Right, the little shelves in the uh, garage are in. Ah, uh, look at that. Order them up a little bit. They look ugly now and all rusty, but I am gonna uh, clean them all up. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with these. Uh, they're gonna clear the handlebars, obviously, but I'm gonna build units in here, cover up all the wiring so my, my bikes don't catch all that wiring and make sure it's safe. And then over here, I actually gotta make mounts for a boiler, yeah. And I'm putting it right at the back because my shower is going to be an external shower. So I'm going to have like some sort of awning over here so I can have a nice hot shower after a muddy day's ride or just to freshen up. Let's start adding electrical devices. <laughs> okay. So I've built this bit that's going to slide in the back wall. This bad boy is going to fit in here like that and then I'm going to put bits that I need along here so it's nice easy access and easy to wire ish so right box of gubbins wiring lights wires switches these are disconnects battery switches on and off big garage unit obviously for the garage let's uh unpack a few things and then we can put them on there. This is pretty cool, take a look at this. This is a smart solar meter. So this just basically tells me how much power I've got, how much solar power is being charged into my leisure batteries and all that rad jazz. Um, and it, it gets Bluetoothed to my phone. So there's an application 
to this, and then uh, it, it'll tell me all about my van. And then this is all for uh, my uh, fuses and stuff that I'm gonna be, because everything I'm gonna be running is gonna be fused, just in case something goes pop. This is gonna go pop and not the van. This is another one, this, this, this is cool. Look at this, I like this, look at that. So basically you can run one power supply, one live to here, and it just sends off in different ones. You got one, two, three, four, five, you got 10 here. This is called a buzz bar. Pretty cool, huh? Buzz bar, I like the sound of that. Buzz in, I'm gonna screw this all in. I need to start making a bracket for my shower which is my boiler and I'm still waiting on a water pump. Oh, and we've got another one here. This is for the solar panel. That needs to go on here somewhere. All right, screw all that in. So I'm running two inverters. The inverters have got a 2000 watts each on them. Um, I've gone for big ones because for a start you can have just the one, but because I'm running e-bikes, we can charge it up in the back of the van. This is a smart solar charger control. So basically I'm running a solar panel on the roof, 330 watts I've got up on the roof. That's, I feel like that's plenty uh, to charge both of these leisure batteries. This is, um the voltage sensor for the solar panel, I've forgotten what this is, and this is a, a junction bit that you can link up, I think, your batteries, which I need to look into that. Then this side, second inverter, we've got this here because I'm gonna be running a 240 hookup, so if I'm in a campsite or I'm at home, I can just plug in the van to electrics, which I'm gonna have the hookup externally over there because I am gonna run a normal uh, plug socket like you get in your house in the uk we've got the three probe socket so i'm gonna have two of them in in the back of the garage one will be specifically for a hookup so if i'm directly hooked to the uh, to the mains i can just use that socket or if i don't then i can use the other socket and i can go through my inverter and use the power out of my batteries now that this is all done uh, i need to do my boiler so I'm gonna make the boiler, oh, I'm gonna make the boiler plate here and get that unboxed. So, boiler, let's get that. All right, this is the boiler. This is a very, very clever little thing. I saw this, no lie, on Instagram. And then I got speaking to other folk in the van life community. They suggested this as well, so I've gone with it. This is the water pump. I need to mount that to the wall somewhere over there like this. Like, this is so cool because it's um, it's portable. Now, if I had my Jeep, this would live in the Jeep. All these pipes, you can just chuck it into some dirty old river water and pump it out and you've got hot water from a river. It's cool. It doesn't need mains. It doesn't need a hookup. It runs off two batteries, like torch batteries. But this is the boiler. Look at that. This is gonna mount it. Yeah. Look at that. And then they got in the butt. Let's get this thing mounted. Right, I'm gonna make this bracket for the boiler and then. Uh... <laughs> Look who's here! Look who's here! I bought these for daddy. Hey! <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing without Jen's bacon on Blake Fields. Hey, monkey! You cold, you cold, you cold. <laughs> Would you like one, monkey? I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> I'm eating it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not eating it. My cup is sitting. <laughs> Look, this is a little bracket that I'm making. So this bracket is gonna go 
under here like this. And then it'll go through these screw holes in there because there's a screw hole there in the middle that I'm gonna use. But I need to just cut out all these bits here for the pipe work. So I gotta just recess these a little bit so I can remove pipes when I need to. We've got ourselves our first bracket for the wall and then the top. That's a little bit more ingenuity. It is, it's a lot more engineering. There you go. I'm gonna break that. That yeah. red one is for hot water. And that one use cold water. And then you see what daddy's got to do is cut these out here, make yeah. loads of noise. And, and then, oh, oh no. That's for the batteries go in there. Yeah. And they go oh, in there. No. Oh no. You do it again, daddy. Oh, oh no. I broke it. Oh no. Oh no, I'll put it back. Let's not break it. Right, daddy's going to make noise. Go sit with mummy. Good boy. This is the bracket. Look at it. Looks cool, doesn't it? So these little bits that I've waved out are gonna go like this, like that. I need to drill one, two, three, four holes in this bracket, and I'm gonna do the same on the other top. So this side, I've got a, a grab handle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this grab handle, something similar to what I did at the bottom, up the top, but use this rail right here and put a screw th through there and into a bracket that I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna make that one now and then mount it and then right, spray it black, primer it, spray it black so it looks cool and uh, yeah, it looks factory. So I worked till gone, well, 10.30 last night. It's the next day. Um, and I was making this pump situation. Okay, so I was making this thing. It took me ages. Get to the point where I need to put the pump in and I've literally cut it three mil too short so the pump doesn't actually fit in. So I've got to take, doesn't fit in, doesn't fit in. I put it inside the van, I didn't fit in. It's half eight in the morning, at the early start. But hey, I'm gonna crack on. I'm so addicted to this van right now, I don't actually wanna stop building, but it's my last day for a couple of weeks because I have to go out filming some other videos for the channel, all that rad jazz. So I'm gonna try and get as much as I can done today, start the wiring and do all this rad jazz. But I gotta make that again. Gotta make that again. It's just, just stop, Blake. So, because Martin's got a van as well, because we both felt like we need to do one together, it's a bit messy in here. But as you can see, all the wiring and stuff is pretty much exactly the same as what I'm doing. So we're basically mirroring each other's vans. We built the rack in the back in my one first to work that out. Yeah. Then I welded this up for mine. Whilst Martin was doing, whilst I was doing that, he was planning on where we're gonna put the electrics. So basically I just did a carbon copy and put it in my van. So kind of making it easy and also doing it under closed under a roof is so much nicer than doing it on your drive because that's what the plan was going to be, but then... I forgot to tell you that you've got to do the rest of it on your driveway. I have to, have to do it by video. Okay, cool. So it's also all right to do it on your driveway because <laughs> <laughs> he's kicking me out. I'm going to have to get... No, he's not. No. The tea's rubbish. <laughs> it's mint tea. You can't get it yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, I like mint tea. Thanks. Oh, it's suddenly got bitterly, bitterly cold. It's, it's, it's actually been snowing a little bit. Not now, but I've had to go away for a few days to do a bit of filming and also I went on holiday. So it's like uh, way more than just a few days. It's like a week and a half. Anyway, you don't need to know that. 
We're on the wiring, live wiring. Look at all this. So we've got, this stuff is really expensive. I th I've got five meters, so, and it was like a hundred pound. It's really expensive wiring. But you need it to be good because there's gonna be a lot of current going through these big cables. Um, so, I was looking at the instructions and it's saying I should run a, a live, the red, from the main starter battery in the van all the way back into a fuse box and from the fuse box into the into a battery. Actually, no, it goes into a split relay charger and then into my, uh, through another fuse and then into another battery. And I've got two batteries, so I've got to do that twice. Run two of these big red cables from the main starting battery in the van, in the front under the driver's seat, which I need to take out. So I'm gonna to have to get that out first, then run the big lives and then run an earth. These are only short earths. Look, it's only tiny. So that is gonna be earthed into the van and then start running all the little cables to all the lights inside, which I'm gonna start with the earths first. So, but I'll come to that in a minute. Anyway, I'm rambling, I'm excited. Cable, all of this, okay, going in the van. Front seat out, plate off, and now we can reveal nice Bosch battery. Looks cool, looks brand new. Right, so I'm gonna run two lives from this battery through the wall, hidden, and then uh, it'll go straight to the two batteries in the back, plus a live. No, the it'll go through the voltage sensing relays so that you're not flattening the batteries. So this is the main feed down to the back, and then we'll plumb everything in from the back of the battery so you're not affecting this. So when you leave the vehicle for a period of time, you come back to it, this battery will be okay. You always start this vehicle and then be able to charge the ones in the back you have to. Let's run these, let's run these cables. Let's do that now. So I'm uh, just tidying up the wiring because there's loads of foreign wires in here that we don't really want hanging around. And what Martin said is uh, if you just leave them in your van and something's wrong with them, you'll always be blowing a fuse because you don't know what's going on. So get rid of all foreign wires. So that's what I'm doing. And I've just pulled this out. Remember that step that I took off the bottom of the, of the van? I think that was in episode two. No, it was in one. Um, look at the control unit for this thing. It's all, all tucked away in the filler cap right here. So I'm gonna dig this all out, cut it out, because we don't need it, and then we can start running them wires. Look at that. Dug this all out of the van. And that was just for two items. Now we can start running the cable. But that looks so much neater. So much neater with nothing in there. Do you want that? Nah. Two lives are in. The cool thing is, right, because we link in the two batteries together, I ran the other cable through here, through this pipe, all the way, and it comes out there, to this fuse board, and then to the charger, and then from the charger, straight back into the battery. But also, what we found as well, is this great big plastic box has got some ports on the side. So instead of going, trying to feed it all the way through this steel box under the seat, you can basically just come through the side. Now that has saved a lot of faff. Now we're just working out light wiring, which Martin, what do you reckon? It's basically like house wiring, but in a van, but. Yeah, there you go. So we put it up here. <laughs> but trying to explain it in here, in here, is quite hard. Yes, it's where we. This well, this is what drawings. See it, but drawings, drawings are good. And we'll mock it up. It, it'll work. It'll work. All right, T is so freaking cold. Well, I just thought I'd let you know it's minus two. Minus two. Yeah. Like minus two out there. Yeah. In here as well. So, yeah, the things you make me do for you to Blake to build something. Blake's building. <laughs> 
Right, before I continue to do wiring and get super excited or running cables everywhere, I do need to do a little bit of welding. And that is in the garage. <clears throat> I've got these two massive, great big door, uh, drawers systems. I've got these two sliders here and the slider system over here. But I want to raise one side of the drawer higher than the other. Yeah, the reason why is I want them to clear each other. So I don't want the bars to be bashing into the bikes that are gonna be stored on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld some big box, this box section here, 40 mil box. I'm gonna weld it underneath the mounting points here, like this, which is exciting because in this little void here, because it's gonna be wasted space, I'm not gonna be wasting it. I'm gonna be building another drawer in here. Look, and these sliders are another drawer system that I'm gonna be building inside the drawer and that's going to hold all my tools my bike tools and all the necessary things to uh fix a bike when they're uh when it's broken all right let's get grinding let's get messy let's get my safety glasses on Okay, now this is probably the biggest mistake I've done so far on the fan. <laughs> and it's, it's in here and I've, I've literally messed up. I, I wouldn't say it's a mistake. A mistake is quite being quite hard on yourself. You're not a full on welder, but just, just a learning curve. <laughs> it's just a learning curve. Literally a learning curve. That is not straight. I tried it in two pieces and um, this one's not flat and that's not flat. And it has to be really flat because there's a draw and that needs to be bang on. Yeah, the strength's on there. So basically what's happened is where you welded, it's twisted the steel, but it's gone through the floor. I did, yeah. So I've been whacking with a hammer and Martin's like, you don't hit it with a hammer because you're weakening the, the steel. And also I cut through the floor, trying to sort out my biggest mess ever. I don't want to embarrass myself, filled which it, I have. Filled it full of weld, but it's okay. I did fill it with full weld. But yeah, where, where, you, where you were hitting it with a hammer to get it straight, so this is basically twisted. So it's twisted up. Um, but where you're hitting it with a hammer, all you've done is dent the metal, stretch it, which then means when the weight of the, the cantilever on the end is pushing upwards, it's gonna make that flex. And we don't want any flex. So the only option you've got, well, the best option, sorry, it's not the only option, there's lots of options. You can just keep filling it with welding, want to. Um, I would cut it off without trying to, trying to damage the floor too much. Plate the floor with 50 mil wide, which gives you five mil either side. Um, and then plug weld that through the middle, weld down the edges so that's a solid surface to work to. And then weld this to that, and then you know you're gonna be flat, solid, and not gonna come off. And welding the box to the flat bar. Yes. It's gonna be way nicer than way trying to weld nicer, the skinny, skinny floor. Yeah, I think it's the, the fact you've got like a one and a half, two mil thick floor and a four mil thick box. You're scared to get onto the I floor. am very scared, and I've messed up already. It doesn't matter, it's easy fixable, it's a good job. You've looked at it now and fixed it now rather than I mean all I could hear was the hammer <laughs> yeah, so it was, I was like and he did tell me off what are you doing yeah, I like, adjusted the nothing why are you adjusting it with a hammer <laughs> um but yeah so good job we found it now rather than going too far into it welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to my van build series I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey. The ups, the downs, the funny bits, and not to forget all my mistakes as well. I've literally messed up. Blood, sweat and tears is going to make this the ultimate mountain biker's van. This is my most ambitious project I've ever done. At a young age, I've always been into camping, overlanding and mountain biking. Now, it's all about taking my family on adventure and just being in the grey outdoors. This, my friends, is Blake Bill's van life. Powered by Works Tools. In this episode, I'm gonna be installing the final window. I get in a tangle with my wiring. Oh my fucking goodness. But first, let's pick up from where we left off, and that is fixing the biggest problem in the build so far. And Martin's not angry with me, he's uh, just disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, you can see that's wrong, but you still carried on. I did carry on. That's the bit I really can't get made around. Because I thought I could fix it. But wow, that's not straight. That's uh, definitely not straight. <sighs> D 
done. That was very embarrassing. Anyway, we make mistakes. Look at that. And I grind that, clean it up, and put that flat bar on there, then cut at full length. I thought I'd uh, use little bits just to save on scrap and money, you know, because budget, budget, right? But that's not always the case. That's cutting corners, and I did rush it. So, lesson learned, don't rush when it comes to metal. If it was wood, I could just literally unscrew it and put a new one in. But there's no wood here. It's all metal, and I'm welding, and I'm learning. Uh, anyway. <sighs> plate is cut look at that that is in there like a dream so I drilled these holes here so I can spot weld inside there so it doesn't come up and off the bed of the van then I'll tack weld all along here but that's given me a really really nice surface to place this on now I can just weld that in there weld that but now the difficult part is making sure these are straight so when I put the draw sliders on like the brackets for the draw sliders they are actually level let's uh, let's just weld these in get it all nice put the brackets on do the other side then we can move on to the window then run all the wires I hope that's right because there's no going back now, man. That is welded in there. The left hand side draw sliders <laughs> installed. Oh, Christ, that has actually taken me, no lie, five hours to do that. And it doesn't look like much, but it is a lot going on. It didn't help that I made a mistake, but oh, I was so tired from that. No lie, it's so, so tired from that bit of uh, brain mushing, head scratching, overthinking all the time. Anyway, that's done. Let's move on to the right hand side, which I hopefully is going to be a little bit, a little bit simpler. I think it will be a little bit simpler. Right, let's move on over there then. We've got cake, but it's not cake from Jen, it's cake from Becky, Mr. Jones's partner. And look at that, what is it? Lemon drizzle cake. Lemon drizzle cake. <gasps> Do you reckon we can eat it all by tonight? I think we can smash all that tonight. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. That is really good. Why do you sound so surprised, Blake? Well, I'm just so used to the wives cooking. I don't get other wives or girlfriends cakes. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Thanks, Becky. That is good. Man. That is really good cake. <laughs> really good cake. So bespoke. So I had to cut around this bit here. And what I had to do is move all the brackets. Oh, it's just, it's bespoke. <laughs> it's not meant, it's not made to fit van life, eh? It's taken me freaking ages to do this. Flipping ages. It's probably the most strenuous day I've had on the build. It's just these sliders. <sighs> but worth it in the end. Worth it. Right, let's weld it in. Have you finished this yet? No, I haven't finished it. You're not finished it yet? No. <laughs> it's dark outside. I know it's dark. It's dark and the temperature's dropping. <laughs> and it, I had to like, wow. Well, you just spent far too long sorting out what you look like on camera rather than fixing your own. <laughs> the cake, the cake's all gone now. Cake is not all gone yet. <laughs> I need another one and a cup of tea. This might be my seventh cup of tea. You know where the kettle is? I do, do you want one? Yes, please. All right then. Done. Sliders are in, man. That didn't take me all day. It took, it. <laughs> that took me all day to put these in. That's not going anywhere. These ones are in, the side one. They, well, the, the, this looks so good. They welded into the van. They're never coming out and I don't want them to come out. On that note, it is actually been all day and um, I'm gonna go home till tomorrow. I'm gonna run some wires. And I cut a window in. What do you reckon? Are you gonna do that in a day tomorrow? Or are you gonna... I am gonna do that in a day. Don't, don't. <laughs> I'm not gonna. 
I mustn't bully you. I've been no. not to bully you. <laughs> it's been, it's Don't bully. bully Blake. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Lights on. Camera action. Right, here's the next day. It is still freezing. I'm gonna start cutting in this window. We've done that one in episode three, and I was waiting for the other one to come for this side, the sliding door. I got it now. So, I'm gonna remove all of this, and I am gonna cut a big hole in the side of my van. But because I've made the kitchen, I might struggle around here. But, hey ho. Let's cut this window, I'm excited. Big hole in the van again. Oh, wait a minute, and I actually got to cut holes for up here. This one, and that one for the skylights. I might actually do that whilst I'm actually cutting holes in the van. Might as well cut the hole in the van up there, over there, and I got one to do down there for a hookup. So when I'm at a campsite, I can just hook up instead of using the solar. Big hole cut in. Windows and vans, I've learned from that one, and they are pretty simple to put in. Like I've seen people drawing on the side of the van and then cutting the, the, the window on the outside. And mine's like, you don't want to do that because the manufacturer just basically puts a line inside the van for you to follow. So this is it. This is the window. So you just cut there. Basically you've got to follow this round here like that. And then you follow that line straight across there and then back and then that will fall out and you will have yourself a big hole to mount your window in also if you are doing it by yourself i would highly recommend you tape the other side because if you just let it fall down the side of your van you'll scratch this hole of your van which is not going to be exciting is it it's going to be disgusting let's cut this all Window cut in the side of my van, look at that. What do you think, Ben? It look good? Sensational. It looks sensational, doesn't it? You know, that, was th that there, right? Because I had help for the first one, because I've never cut a hole in the side of a van. You, you, there's no room for mistakes. And if you, if you feel like you're gonna make a mistake, maybe just bring in the line a little bit more, make it a bit bigger, and then start taking some bits out, which I did in the corners. I did all the corners, I made it a little bit bigger, and then I kind of grinded it all the way back to the right, size and shape that I wanted the side of the van. Look at that, wow. Cut that out, look at that. Cut that out of the van. Cup of tea. Sorry, Ben. That, that dust went all over you. <coughs> Sorry. Cup of tea. Do you want a tea? Yeah, please, I'm a respirator. He, he, <laughs> Cheers. Whilst you're drilling holes and cutting big holes in the van, Let's cut this little hole, but this one's quite scary. This one is for a uh, hookup. So that's gonna go in there like that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's cut this hole in the van, drill some holes, cut round it. Should be good, I hope. This is the stuff I'm going on about. That is going in there. Sliding door windows in. Oh, I like that. Look at it. Doesn't it look good? It doesn't does look good. good. Can it skip on the inside as well? Just check so it's right. Oh, wicked. Right. I, like I feel like that's the. What about the skylights? You can't do the skylights yet because I know you really want to do I really it. want to do the skylights. You cut holes in your van. You really yeah. want to do it. Um, we need the solar panel, it's more important where that goes. And then the, the skylights have to go around the solar panel. Okay. I'm happy with that. 
Have to relax. It's nice. All yeah. of the, look at all this. It looks like the colours of the rainbow that's going in this van. There's yeah. a reason because I know I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. About wiring, and this is the probably the biggest thing about van conversions is the wiring that people get their head all wound up, and it's my head's wound up. So easy to get confused, but basically what we've done to make it easy is 12 colours, which gives us 12 circuits. Yeah. So you can have like the wiring, the heating circuit, the lighting circuit, the um, USBs and we're gonna have inside the van, the sw anything you've got inside the van. Okay. So then you know that when you run that wire through the van, wherever you decide to run it, yeah. from the, the unit to the switch, yeah. you know that that wire is for a particular circuit. Okay, so to make it a little bit simple, yeah. lighting, yeah. yellow. Just go yellow. Yellow because it looks like a light colour. Yeah, if you want to. I mean, make yellow. a note of it and then you know what it is yeah. anyway. And then would I run a black wire for earths? Yeah, generally you can use black or brown. Brown, okay. Yeah, is a, is a generic rule, but I would use black and then red as a switched. So, the, so a switch will always have a permanent live feed. You'll always have an earth to that switch normally, unless it's a double pole switch. Double pole means that you can walk inside the door, turn the light on, and then you can go to the back of the van and turn that light back off again. So to make it really simple, in my head, because yep. I've done it for ages, the black would always be the earth. You know that's going to be a plus 30. Yes, okay. So a permanent live feed, not ignition fed. And then you could generally use red for plus 15, which is a, uh, a switch live, but that's normally, again, orange. Okay. So if we decide in both our vans yep. that we do orange as a switch live feed. Okay. So we do that and then you choose whichever colour you've got left, which there is a few. And then you choose the circuit you want that to be. Yeah. And then you know everywhere in the van what these ones are going to be. Yep. And then you these choose can what colours like... can be your circuits. Oh, right. We will be putting a relay on the main larger consumer items. So the water pump, the fridge, the heater, reason for a relay is purely so that you're not putting the feed through the switch. So a lot of people make the mistake of putting a live feed straight through the switch to feed something which drags a lot of power. Switches aren't designed to do that, so you use the switch to turn on the relay, which has then got a permanent live feed to it, okay. which will then feed the consumer unit. So the switches don't overheat and we don't have things catching fire. Catching fire. Right, that's a lot of information, but I understand to, a, to an extent. I'll yeah, probably be going, Martin! Okay. And before anyone also states how thin the wire is, it is 13 amp wire, so we are fine for all the circuits we've got. So that is something to look at. As a generic rule, most things will be sort of 6 amp or 8 amp, but okay. we've got 13 amp, this is proper actual automotive cable. Okay, yeah, I think we're under control, but I think make a list of all the things you've got. Yeah. And then we decide which colours are which. Look at this. Got some sort of issues going on. Got one loom over there, one loom here. Got a loom over here. Got to cut some more of this stuff. And we got a big tangle up, which Martin's kindly helping me put it all together. He left you alone for one minute. He left me alone. I did. Ah, oh, I got a bit carried carried away. All the colours was like, woo, skittles, man. All the rainbow colours, dude. <laughs> all right, we're getting there. Hey, he's untangled it. That was an absolute nightmare. So I've got three lives and two earths going up to the main panel. Um, so I'm going to run this through. I've taped them all together. Look at that. That looks quite, quite tidy, quite satisfying. So I'm going to run it through, try and jiggle it down this post right here so you, can, you don't even see there's wires there. And then straight down to my... Um, Relays down the bottom. Right, let's, uh, let's do that. It's freezing. Okay, so all this cable, they're gonna run in the van. Now what I've chosen is for the fridge, I'm going blue wire, heater, I'm going brown, pump one, I'm going dark green, and pump two, I'm going green. And I'm gonna start from there, and I'm gonna do that again. Ah, okay, hang on, let me let me think. You know what I might do? I might have to take out all of this cable, make sure they're the right length, because they're going to the same spot. So, remove this cable that I struggled with, but I, 
and then I'm going to tape all the little wires to that and run those down to there. Let's pull that cable out. It's easier to get out, it's harder to get in. <sighs> Oh my, I done it, I done it, I done it. I'm not gonna lie, that took me f ages to get out. All right, I'm, that was an absolute struggle, that took me flipping ages. We started the introduction to the wiring, I still gotta run all of this wires in the van, but I can't really do that yet because I need to build cupboards and stuff and I don't wanna run wires there thinking it's gonna be there, but it's gonna end up being over there, so. So I need to do that in episode 5, which is going to be an exciting one. It's going to be a monster one, because I'm building cupboards. I'm building the kitchen. That's going in, finally. I'm going to be putting boards here. I'm going to be insulating everywhere, finishing off in the, in the garage and running all of this wire. There's a lot there. I've said a lot. It is 9, it's 9 p.m. in the night. I've been going all week. It's, it's been a tough one, but it's been exciting. A long. It's been a big learning curve. I'm stoked that you're enjoying this whole series that's going on, but stick around because episode 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 were the final build of this whole thing. Let us know in the comments down below. If you've started to build a van or you have, give me some pointers on what I should be doing because, hey man, I've never built a van. I like tinkering, I like building stuff, but building a van, this is, the, this is a hell of a task. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to go home, I need to pack up and head out. Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to my van build series. I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits and not to forget all my mistakes as well. I've literally messed up. Blood, sweat and tears is going to make this the ultimate mountain bikers van. This is my most ambitious project I've ever done. At a young age I've always been into camping, overlanding and mountain biking. Now it's all about taking my family on adventure and just being in the grey outdoors. This, my friends, is Blake Bill's van life, powered by Works Tools. All right, come with me. We've had a month off, right, the build. Welcome back, you beautiful people, and welcome to episode six. Uh, there's a lot to do, and this one's quite exciting because we're going to be starting to add wood. And a lot of people are going, why are you building metal? Why are you doing this? Why not wood? Anyway, now we're going to be adding wood to the van. We've got stuff to install. We've got insulation, sound deadening. I'm going to install the 70 litre freshwater tank. I'm going to board this off so it's completely blocked off and do stuff in the, in the garage and more wiring and cutting more holes in the van. It's all coming up. Stay tuned. Right, I'm going this way. I'm going to stick it all in these voids here, the bigger voids. I'm going to use this uh, loft insulation. It's uh, anti-dampness and all that jazz. <laughs> Don't fall over, Nick. I'm going to put it all up here as well. I might need more, but we'll see. Forbidden candy floss. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat this candy floss, Nick. <laughs> This is sound deadening mat. Uh, it's dodo, de 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 dodo, dodo mat. It's just this foil stuff, but it's got like a rubber stuff on the back of it like that. And that just sticks on big panels to stop them from vibrating when the van's going down the road. Just deadening, deadenings, 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 deadenings the sound. There we go, deaden, deaden, deaden. So I think there, on those bits there, and the window in there, all these panels up here, just to stop them from vibrating. So I'm gonna do that. It does sound totally different, doesn't it? It sounds different already, weird. Maybe because I've insulated this, but it's like stopped it. It's like made it a bit more Less echoey, echoey, echoey. Next bit is more insulation. This, this stuff 
This is quite expensive. I've put the price up there on screen. It is nuts, but it's really good. So it's heat, sound, and it's mold resistant. So it's like really expensive, it's Gucci stuff. Mr. Jones has got a van that he's, it lives outside and it's been out there for a year and it's super dry, super dry in there, bone, bone dry. I'm not insulating the floor in there because it's pointless. Right, open this up. Blah, 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 blah. And then we can do my favorite. It's working with wood. I can't wait for that. Right, where's my knife? Cool thing about this stuff, it's got like a, an adhesive layer on the back. Oh, it's gonna be so cozy in here, it's gonna be ridiculous. Right, before I finish this, I've seen people that you can use this rock wool everywhere, and it, I'm using it in big voids like this because you can't really insulate these bigger ones with this stuff. So they will block out the whole van and then they'll just put rock wool everywhere. I've seen people use foam. I've gone for this because it's tried and tested. Martin says it's legit and I've seen people use it. And plus, it, like I said, it acts as a, a sound deadening as well. And it's mold resistant, which vans condensate because humans are in here breathing away and that's just gonna fill this place up with moisture. Hence why I've gone for this in certain places like this. And also, this doesn't take up much room. Look, it's not that much room. Now I can just board up from here, straight up. Instead of going from this face all the way down and filling this whole void with this rock wool, I'm gaining more room. Because you don't have much room in a van. By the time you've put everything in, it's taken up a lot of room. Right, this is done. Right, insulation, pretty much 90% done. I've got 10% left to do, but I can't do it because I'm gonna still run some cables. I'm gonna board this off. So I'm gonna run some batten along here, some batten up there, some beams and like wire, and anyway, I'm gonna do that and then put a big fat piece of uh, plywood up and this bit is fully isolated from the elements like I've said already. So time for my favorite bit, wood. Love woodwork. I can make a mistake and go, ah, oh, and cut another one with steel. Can't really do that. Where's my wood? I love this machine. I've always wanted one of these. Do you know what the best thing about this, Nick, is? Do you know what it is? And the viewers. There's no cables. Like, all the tools I'm using, okay? Batteries. Just all fed by batteries. So I don't trip over cables or need to run a cable for that. I literally, that's it. I like this one. If you power it on, there's a laser. Look at that. Whee! <laughs> so I know I'm cutting a straight line. Let's measure, let's get cutting. Day one done on this episode. Uh, we've done quite a bit. Uh, now I'm gonna go get screws, I'm gonna go get some wood, come back tomorrow, and then this will be totally different. Cause I'm gonna be doing a lot of woodwork, which I cannot wait. So I'm gonna go to the shops, go get some stuff, and I'll see you tomorrow morning with a cup of tea in my hand. All right, see ya. So, the reason why I'm building a wooden frame here is because I want to put insulation in this wall and I can't just go to this because I'll be losing bed space. So, this batten is the right thickness so I can put in my Kingspan insulation board. I'm not going to put a window here because I'm not going to have my garage open whilst I'm sat inside watching people steal my stuff. So, it'll be shut and locked up. All right, put this one in. What I'm doing is I'm gonna cut this very thin plot. I actually don't know the thickness of this thing. 
It's like two mil or three mil, but I'm using a really thin ply on the back because I'm actually gonna clad it in tongue and groove so it looks like a deck of a boat. I didn't want it to sound really bad, but that's how it is. Anyway, I'm using thin ply on the back. I'm gonna cut it out. This is gonna prove very difficult because there's loads of bends and boobs and there's not straight boobs. Boobs. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna use my big hand saw. That's what I'm gonna do. Next hard bit is cutting this angle there all around the top. Would you do it in a number of pieces? I've cut one big piece. Martin's noticed because my setting was on one, but he is saying if it was on three, it, this can move. It's called pendulum, so basically it allows, when you go around a corner, it allows the blade to move slightly more, so yeah. it can go around a corner. When it's held tight in its little gubbin, doofer, when you try and go around a corner, it just makes the piece of wood bounce up and down. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every day is a school day. Every day is a school day. Very stoked with that. A few more screws. That actually took a lot longer than I thought. I mean, I did it. Ma Martin actually did it. Martin helped me yeah, do it's it. It's okay. You can ride mountain bikes. But yeah, there we go. It's in. Took a while, but oh my gosh, look at it. I can just see it now. You come round, you open the doors, you slide out your big sliders, your bikes are in there. Big floodlight. Woo! I'm excited. This piece of equipment is really cool. Like my phone's just about to die. This little guy, it's a USB and you can use the battery out of my jigsaw or whatever. And we know that it will charge. Now I can continue working without my battery or my phone dying. I like that. Right, so we've done the back wall. I've got some bits to do inside there. Uh, I'm gonna screw some more batten to the framework so I can run some more uh, paneling, but that's pretty much done for now. I just gotta go get some more wood so I can start building the cabinets. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm gonna put in the water tank because that is gonna be an absolute bath. I can't wait not to do it. Actually, I can wait, not, I can't wait. Anyway. So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a steel bracket under here in the spare wheel bit, so I can put my water tank. Because 70 liters is equivalent to 70 kilos, so that's a lot of weight. You don't just want to be putting it up here with some small screws and bolts and stuff, so I'm gonna make a legit frame for it. Bespoke, kind of modified this a little bit, but uh, what I'm gonna be putting in here is gonna be stronger, a hell of a lot stronger. Right, what I need to do is work out where this needs to go. Okay, did some cutting of some steel. Got some steel. Excuse the face, I've been actually working under the van. It's dirty under there, man. It's grimy. So, this little box section's gonna weld them up like this into an H section. I'm gonna offer it underneath the van. I'm gonna drill some holes, two holes each side, like two, four, six, and eight. Uh, one is gonna be for the threaded bar. I'm going for an M8 threaded bar. So this is gonna be clamping. So it can be one either side with another piece of steel underneath. And that's gonna kind of pull it up into the van. So it'll be super strong. And then the other hole is gonna be a bolt through the floor of the van internally into a nut here so I can bolt this whole framework to the structure of the van. So it will be part of the van. So it's super strong. 70 kilos at the end of the day is, is a lot of weight. You don't want that falling off or cracking or doing any damage because hell man, no drinking water, let alone this going through someone's window. <laughs> Right, I finished the water tank uh, mounting, which goes underneath the, the van. Look at this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
This is a M8 threaded bar and I've stuck on some fuel hosing here just so the threads don't cut into the blue tank that will fit in here. This is snug as a bug in a rug. These brackets are gonna go on here like that. Cool, let's, uh, let's install this and uh, move on because I've bought some more wood for the cabinets, but I'll show you that in a bit. I'm super happy with that. That is, that is, that is not going anywhere. Just chuffed with that. Right, now, more woodwork. Come with me. Now for cupboards, I'm not gonna bespokely make cupboard doors and I, uh, cause that's just, I don't wanna do that. So I've gone for kitchen fascias. Look at this. These are wall end panels for kitchens. So they're waterproof, they're watertight, they're durable, they're strong, and they look good. So I don't have to like cut a perfect shape to fit in a big hole. Now these are a certain size, so I'm gonna build the cabinet to the size of these doors. Inside the van, I'm gonna have two cupboard doors, the same color, those the ones there, out there. There's gonna be two there and one here. This whole unit is gonna be one size from back to front, and it's gonna to come to about run about here. So I'm gonna make it as simple and as easy as possible, but neat and clean. Just run time lapse of me just installing this wood because I can't wait to see cupboards coming in. Right, this one is in. Mr. Jones came in and helped me because I was I'm back. Hey, back everyone. I was absolutely scratching my head. You, you were making it more complicated than it needed to be. But, uh, oh. but now we are cabinet making, and uh, mine's helped, well, kindly helped me decide what I'm going to do in this corner because the van has got loads of weird shapes, and to try and cover them is really hard, and that's where I was struggling. Martin was like, just make it easier for yourself, just make some square edges, block it off, so you don't have to like carpet and try and cut wood around certain shapes in the van. So we've, we've cheated slightly. So most people board the van out on the inside, make it dead square, and then they fit everything square. But we didn't want to do that because we're wasting space. So what we decided to do, and what I normally do, is we've made everything bespoke to the actual van, which makes it more complicated to measure. But uh, did, we're way, com that's died, way complicated to make. Like, I mean, I turned up and there was blood coming out your ears, pretty much. So. Is it actually blood coming out of that finger? Yeah. Blood <laughs> coming out of that <laughs> finger. You left you for an hour. You've literally <laughs> bled everywhere. There's blood here, yeah. there. There's blood on the van. Yeah, so what, what we're doing is, because you've got these angles inside, so we've, this is this is the main big cupboard. It's gonna be a little storage pouch in here. And then we're just gonna get rid of the edge, so we just cut that nice piece of wood, which is a Look little work that. of art. So when you got the right tools. Yeah, when you got the right tools, that actually it helps a lot. Make a difference. Um, yeah, so there'll be a little pocket in there, and then we'll just 45 degree that, flat plate that, and done. Easy. Yeah, it's so easy when you're like, yeah, we'll just do that, 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 done. It done took now. me two hours to just work out where I should put lines on the roof to put these. I mean, can we show everybody? Show, can we show? Is it there, or is it there? Or is it there? Is it there? Is it that hole? Or is it that hole? Is it this hole? Is it that hole? Is that one? Or is it these three? There's lines everywhere. I freaked out. And then Mark comes and goes, no, just like this. And then that was done in like no time at all. Right, with Mr. Jones's help. There he is. <laughs> We've completed this little bit of antagonizing, head-scratchingly cool bit of angle. It's a cool bit of angle. It is a cool bit of angle. Look at it. <laughs> as cool as it gets. <laughs> now we've finished this bit here, and this bit, we've still got to finish off this bit in here, which I'll come to in a minute, but we're going to box off here because this is where all the cables are going to be running up and into bits and pieces where I'm going to have USB, uh, mood lighting, lights are going to go underneath here. Oh, and a little switch panel that's going to go on the end of this bit here. So I'm going to do that next, and then I'm going to move on to that. So, recently I had to shoot off rather quick. Uh, just had a little boy. Yes, thank you very much. 
Hence why I haven't been on the build for three weeks now, but who's counting? I'm gonna finish this off because this episode is getting rather long and I'm nearly done with this. Now I'm gonna work this out, finish this off, panel that, cut the holes for the windows, uh, the lights, and then the last thing is put the kitchen in. You always sound like what you do. Well, I, I do, I just don't know how to do it. That's what I struggle with. <laughs> you got baby brain. Yeah, little boy brain now. How do you go back to school? <laughs> I'm going home already. Oh, I need lunch, actually. I'm gonna have lunch. Yeah, the rocket ship is on. We're on fire now. I'm not on fire. I made a mistake again. Well, it's in there, but like, I added 25 mil, and somehow the tools have eaten. Oh, do I, I, do you know what? Right now, I'm disliking it. Come look, look at that. So it's meant to be flush with the wall here, but no, look at that big hole. It's going to cut number five. <laughs> this corner's done. This corner's done. Look at this. Oh, so dreamy. So dreamy. That is most time consuming bit of stuff ever. Progress, progress. So this is all boarded up up here like that. Cupboard is there for now, but I haven't quite finished it because I need to run the ceiling so I can cut this one. Anyway, this is boarded up. This is boarded up. That end pit over there is boarded up. This is kind of done. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> That's, I had to scratch my head quite a lot. Storage. Now is to run lights. This one's gonna be above the cooker. This one's gonna be above the sink. And these are gonna be just like lights there. And then LED lights over there, which I'll come to in a minute. You're dusty. LED mood lighting. What we wrote here ages ago. Now the LED strip is 10 mil, so I've got a 12 mil baton right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow that line there all the way along. And this is gonna be a baton where I'm gonna mount the LED strip light to and then cover it up with some ply on top, that which would be carpeted. Everything in here is getting carpeted, but there's gonna be a little overhang, a little overhang, like a lip. So you won't be able to see the LED, but you'll just see the light. Who's ringing me? Oh, that's Nick. He edits it all. Hello, Nick. You are? Hello, mate. You're Yeah. Yeah, mate. I'm basically filming you talking to me because I was talking. I've uh, soldered this all in. Now to get this thing, turn the lights off, and we are gonna have our first bit of wiring lighting done. But this is gonna be the first test, first lights on of many lights. Plug that in there, plug that bad boy in the extension, and uh, oh, 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 no. oh, dude! Oh, oh, snap! I feel like I want more LEDs. <laughs> It's gonna be more. There is. Obviously. It's gonna be in the kitchen, right? Oh, dude! Hey, stoked! I actually over the moon with that. I've first bit of wiring, first ever soldering. Never soldered in my life. You yeah, know that's true. That's never soldered in my life. Really? Never. Uh, impressive. And I did that. And it's not on fire yet. Then it's not on fire. It will be when the disco is happening. <laughs> Mine's freaking out with the lights. And I uh, oh, like that. I think it's gonna time to do this kitchen because I've been telling you all about it 
from like number three. <laughs> That's number but six. You need, yeah, you need to explain why though. Explain why. You're being hard on yourself there. So I, I thought, yeah, we'll just put it in. Yeah, we'll just do this. It's not because everything behind the scenes is incredible. And they're all linked together. So yeah. we, we had to get the depth here right, the height right. Now you can measure the distance to make it fit. Yeah. It's everything behind the on. scenes yeah. takes a lot of time. Yeah. I'm two months in. Getting it right is difficult. And it's easy to just, like Martin's saying, it's easy to just box your van up and build boxes. Yeah. Square want, it off to make it easier. No, we want as much room as possible because. Fully bespoke. Yeah. So I've run all the cables, well, most of the cables for the USBs and the lights in these bits here. Loads of cables. Look at all that. Look. Headache. I've boarded all of this in here and this here. I've been busy. I've been busy. I've been excited. He's munching sweets. You're way too excited. But my, Oh, and diesel heater. Kind of put that there. Haven't plumbed it in yet. Well, we're going to do it, but off camera. But it is there. But now, Mr. Jones. Innovate is going to help me innovate this innovating kitchen. <laughs> we've got <laughs> we've got this cool idea that we want to put LEDs underneath the worktop of the kitchen. This episode has turned into an absolute monster. We're still on episode three, are we? Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> right, kitchen now. That is the end of this episode. Well, Martin's finished cutting there. That's as far as we can get with the kitchen because it's really late. I need to shoot off and do something. Martin needs to go and do something. Well, we've done a lot on this episode. Sorry about all the noise. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for watching and uh, stay tuned because now it's actually going to be a big break because I'm actually going away for a very long time. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. See ya. See ya. Welcome back you beautiful people and welcome to my van build series. I'm going to be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits and not to forget all my mistakes as well. I've literally messed up. Blood, sweat and tears is going to make this the ultimate mountain bikers van. This is my most ambitious project I've ever done. At a young age I've always been into camping, overlanding and mountain biking. Now it's all about taking my family on adventure and just being in the grey outdoors. This, my friends, is Blake Bill's van life, powered by Works Tools. <laughs> Welcome back, you beautiful people. Welcome to this episode. Blake Bill's the most epic mountain bike van ever behind me. In this episode, it's all about this ladder with a spare wheel supported in that ladder right there and this bespoke roof rack for the top of this van that's going to have a built-in awning, some floodlights, a solar panel. It's all kicking off. But right now, I have to get this set up real good. Anyway, it's all coming up. I've got to do that again. Right, we've got a lot to do so you can see the end product like you did right at the beginning of the video. We're going to kick it off with the ladder on the van because the only way we can work on the top is if we can climb up onto the top. So we're going to start with the ladder first. So what I'm going to do, I've got this panel right here that I'm going to keep. I don't want to kill this because I'm going to use this as a template to make a wooden one later on in the video. And take this off, take the door off and then start working on the door off the van so we can start welding and scraping and hurting the paintwork. Absolutely killed me, right? In like episode three when I was ripping, no, episode two? Episode two, where I was just ripping the van apart. Like that guy. <sighs> These are off, pretty easy, quick job. You're probably looking in the back of the van I am in the process of going to be spraying this, which I'm going to do off camera because I want to do a grand reveal of uh, a different color van and everything in here 
finished. I'm not going to show you too much what's going on inside the living quarters because it doesn't look too much different to when you last saw it, but it is different. There's a lot more stuff in there. But I'm going to show you right at the end, like the ceiling's coming down, but don't worry, don't worry. This will all be completely next, completely finished. But we'll show you snippets in the next episode. This episode is all about the rack, the ladder, lights, awning, living outside quarters. Okay, finished, let's get this door off. Doors off. Now, the next thing we need to start addressing is I've got two of these extractor vents up on the top. I need to cut them out, but one of them is gonna be a skylight vent. The one I'm gonna have to cover up, big hole on my ceiling. But there's one issue, right? I actually don't know how to get up there because we don't have a ladder. So I'm gonna somehow climb up onto the van and cut these air vents out that are glued in with this white stuff. Ah, oh, man. Right, let's get up. Where's my, where is that tool? It's over here. Done. Number two, this one, I am gonna have a skylight, but this one's gonna have a fan built into it so it can extract it out, all the bodily odors and farts. <laughs> of a heavy, heavy weeks riding somewhere, and I just go to bed because I'm super tired, and I just stink out the place. I'm not a smelly guy. Right, I do shower, but my brother will have other words to say. I am cutting the last panel in the back of my wall at the back that separates the back door to my bed. This is the last one to put in. The other one I had to put in a couple of days ago. And then I got carried away because we were doing the roof rack and the, the ladder. But Mr. Jones has just popped out. So I'm going to quickly cut this one, put it in, and he should be back by then. Should be. All right, let's cut this. works well. <laughs> to be honest, this tool right here, I love this circular saw. It's flipping probably this, right? Most used tool so far. I cannot do this build without these tools. That circular saw, amazing for cutting loads of this ply. This tool right here obviously is the drill. It constantly has a four mil drill bit in it because of the screws I'm using. And it's a, it's a, it's a drill slash hammer drill, obviously there's no walls in there, so I'm not gonna go into metal. Then you've got your impact driver, constantly putting screws in, especially if you're not using steel in your van and you're using wood, this tool, you're gonna use a hell of a lot. This, I'm using a lot of steel, and also it cleans up burrs within the van from previous kind of installations like I had in this one. I knocked them all out, there's loads of screws and like sharp bits, I cut my hands up and I went round and I just clean them all up. It's dark in there. I've got three of these, two constantly in there, and I've got a circulation of batteries constantly going. And a good thing about it is there's no cables hanging out the ceiling when you're trying to clamber around. These are battery powered, you can charge them. Jigsaw, loads of nooks and crannies in there that you need to like dig out and stuff. That is another well used one. And these tables, the Pegasus, two of these. Put loads of bits of wood on here, love it. There we go. Most used tools. How have you made that one? <laughs> oh, you put 
I'm looking at the camera. What has he done? I just connected batteries. <laughs> what has he done? <laughs> Man won't let me touch electrics because I actually don't know what I'm doing. He will let me touch them, no, 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 but no, you're gonna unfair. show you're that's gonna show un- me. Blake, that is unfair. People are gonna think I'm bullying you again. No, basically what I was trying to say is it needs to be wired correctly so it's fused and it's all properly done. Th- that's that's exactly why. Not because I I'm not incompetent. But you can wire it through a switch. People generally put a live feed straight through the switch and you switch the switch and it turns it on. But we're going through a fuse as you should do it. So we don't overload the whole thing and, and blow up the van. Switch. I leave you alone for an hour and look what you've done. I put that board Nothing. in. I put that board in. <laughs> <laughs> I put that board in. Yeah. I wired them up. Nice. You wired them up. The hole is gone. Just gotta make sure there's no little, little, little holes because it will leak. We don't want that. Now it's time to attach this ladder to the back, right? Just Just weld this ladder. Easy. (laughs) Doors off. Doors off. Now we've taken everything off the, I've taken all the panels off. There's a reason for that though. Why? So we're going to put a ladder on the back door with the spare wheel in because obviously we put the water tank underneath. So to make it correct rather than just bolting it straight through the frame, we're going to make a frame inside the door which is going to support all the weight. So we're going to cut and weld a little frame in there. Yeah. This one not too worried about. That one about. not worried about that. This one we're going to have we're going to, to cut, do something. Do the same in here. Make it so you can mount it to the, yeah. the back of the door and it won't fall off. <laughs> So we've made a brace on the inside of the door frame that mounts the actual main casing of the door frame, which has now got that plate mounted to the top of it. So we can unbolt this now, put the ladder on there, and it gives you a solid surface. So all the weight of the spare wheel and the ladder pushing on there, there's no flex. There's no flex there. Flex these bolts out. We can now remove the ladder, and that plate is still there. Bolt the ladder on, job done. This is all being painted, so no one needs to yeah. panic about any of that. Don't this worry all, about that. The whole thing's changing colour. Ooh! Okay, the time is nearly 12 a.m. in the morning, and we've pretty much got the ladder done. Pretty much. I feel like we started it yesterday. We've, we did start it yesterday. <laughs> well, in five minutes' time, we started it yesterday. Yeah. But this is looking incredible. You're probably saying, oh, it's overweight. I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. I mean, ultimately, we've made it strong. It's not going to pull the door apart. It's not going to pull the door it's apart. There's this framework on the inside that you lot can't see yet but you will see it. Yeah, you will see it in the morning. I'm tired now, Blake. I'm tired too, so. But this, I'm very proud of this. This is sick. We, we, it is freaking good. It is absolutely, oh, I love it. Anyway, see you in the morning. Bye, right, morning. It is uh, the next day and, um, and we are back on it straight away. Go straight in there. Look at this. This is the extractor fan that's going in the, the bedroom, in the boudoir. Yep. Now we've got the ladder, we can climb up there and cut a big hole for this. Yeah. Both tired. It's both fine. both had an egg and bacon, no, bacon. I mean, I'm, I'm overworked and underpaid. <laughs> You're underworked and overpaid. <laughs> <laughs> right. The viewers will understand. At least I got a fan. Yeah. Fans. Fans. Look at 
a beauty. Do you know what I'm gonna do? It's gonna really annoy you. What's that? Oh, no, why did you do that for? Because it's in the way. It's in the way. It's annoying me. Well, we got, we got to, uh, it's gonna get around. flies and all sorts of stuff on it. Don't worry. It's very true. Right. It's in the way, flapping around the sides. Anyway, that's in, the in there. Now, now we know, we can actually plug that to the battery and see if it works. We can, yeah. I could put, we can do like, put some water on this little screen thing. Oh, you f that gave me a shock. Did you hear that? <laughs> Ow! It's not even plugged. Please tell me Is you it? got that. You get, oh, oh gosh, stop, man. He just... <laughs> <laughs> Your face! Ow! I was, gosh, I was surprised I got a shock from it. You meant to put water in it, not your finger. Not my finger. I'll put water there and see if it goes because it's it actually. Yeah, it's like a little panel. So it is a little panel, right. That is funny. I'll get a battery hooked on and see if it does something. Yeah, so now we can build, so we're going to build a frame around that. Yeah. And then we're going to raise it so when that's all the way up, there'll be a lid on the top I'm of it. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. All right, either. fine. Solar panel on the top, yeah. and then the awning's gonna be built awning into will the be rack. Built into the rack. Rather than mounted to the van. And that is all gonna happen right now. We're in the process of trying to uh, figure out where we're going to put the awning because it, it'll all determine on where we put those things, those little mounts. It's all bespoke. Just got a delivery of what I actually need for the rack. So I can see in the dark, these are off-road floodlights or work, work lights. These are going to be kind of mounted in the rack. It's good they come right now because we are actually building the rack. They're lightweight, aluminium, waterproof, and cool looking. Look at them. They are off uh, Amazon, so we're not too sure how they're going to suffice, but look at them. Quite like that. I want to see how bright they are. I got 10, but I'm only going to use five. I got spares because they might be faulty because <laughs> they were cheap. Plus in there, minus in there. Oh, look at that. That's super bright. And they're flood in the dark. Ah. Ooh, that's exciting. Went up, went down, it spun, it exhausted, it inhaled. I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Cup of tea. Boiling. It feels like we're in Zimbabwe. Where are we, going, we are off to the steel merchants, man, which is just down there. So we're gonna go down there and get some great, which will be great. <laughs> See what I did there. So they've got some, but it's not, it's their long uh, triangles, rectangles. <laughs> Basically make a triangle. <laughs> but I think it's 120 long tri uh, rectangles. 10 mil gap by 120 long. I'll send you a picture. Get in there. Just trying to find the right kind of square mesh stuff we need. One's too big, one's too heavy. I think there's one in there that's galvanized, but is really small, and I think that will work perfectly. They can get some, but it's eight, it's eight by four. Yeah, yeah. We're just kind of 50-50 uh, successful, or is 100% successful. We got the materials, but we haven't got it to hand to complete the rack but it'll be coming tomorrow, which is fine. 
but steel is very expensive now. Holy moly, they get their steel from Ukraine. So he used to pay a thousand pounds a ton of steel. Now it's up to like 1,700, 1,800 pounds a ton. That's nearly double, that is double, that's a lot. Back to the van. You know what? We've been working in winter months. It's weird like when you're building a van, it's always in the winter months. Getting ready for the summer months and all that nice hot weather, it's actually quite nice working in sunny conditions. It's quite warm, even though I'm wearing a hoodie, but Martin up there, look at him. Sunbathing on top of the van already. Look at him, look at all handsome, flexing those muscles. <laughs> it's actually quite nice. I like it. But we need to kind of hurry up because we want to go and use this in the summer months, don't we? Not next summer. I'll be doing my next summer whilst then. <laughs> Deal, you better come. <laughs> right, from now on, from this episode, going forward into the future. I'm not gonna be around for very much of this uh, build. I've been, I'm gonna be super busy. We've got the festival coming up, uh, the Gobel Bike Festival out in Salback from the 16th to the 19th of June. So it'll be in a couple of weeks from this episode. And uh, Mr. Martin Jones, he's gonna be helping me and he's gonna be doing pretty much all the electrics, but you are gonna document a bit of it. Yeah, I'm gonna to try to, so that people can see exactly what we've actually done rather than actually just it being from there to this. To there to that, done. yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, I'm just being brutally honest, I'm not gonna be here for much of it and uh, Martin's gonna help and I am gonna come in and out on some days when I'm free. Well, I'm gonna come and help do the carpeting, yeah. like the four-way stretch in the van. I'm gonna make the cushions, rub down the whole van and spray the van. No one's gonna guess the colour. No one's gonna guess the colour. Well, no they probably will. If you want to if you want to follow Mr. Jones, go to Bare Metal Builds on Instagram. He'll be putting some stories. Hopefully, yep. I'll try and uh, sneak peeks of what we're doing. Yeah, all the uninteresting stuff like exactly. wiring and connections yeah. and things like that. But the uh, one thing about doing a van is you got to be in it. You just got to carry on. Once you start, carry on. Otherwise, you lose momentum. You will take years. And I did say to you at the start it was going to take months, and you were months. like, "Oh, it's going to take six weeks." I was like, "No, it's not." No, you but look. We've but then we've doing... done it properly. Everything's been done properly, and yeah, we've no covered colours every single bit. Exactly. No. We've come a long way from a very empty van that carried sanitary towels around. Yeah. To what we have right now, which is in a luxurious. And the smell is now gone from the inside. Yeah, there's a little, yeah, a little bit in there. Smell a little bit. A of little bit. I might detergent. have to burn some candles in there. But now I'll, I'll post some pictures of bits and pieces I'm doing and then go from there, really. Go from there. To be continued still. Nearly done. We said that lots of times. <laughs> right, back on the roof rack yeah. again. Right. We've got the roof rack off the top of the van for the fifth time? Fifth time? Eighth time. Eighth time. Right, we've taken off too many times. I mean, it's pretty easy to take off. It's eight bolts and it comes straight off. It is, yeah, it's perfect. And it's, you, you would be wondering how heavy this is. It's not really that heavy. We no, haven't used... Two people can get it on and off. Two people get it on and off. But when you have the solar panel on it and uh, all the grate the great and all that, it will be a little bit heavy and the awning. But we're not going to take it off the van. We are now installing the solar panel. What brand is this? Victron in Energy. It's a uh, high quality. Look at it. Look at it. Love the color. 350 watt. 330. 330. 330 watt. Um, in total, the cost of the solar panel and the uh, the charging and the wire. That's yeah, everything. The, the controller, yeah. Bluetooth controller, everything for it came to like 500 pound. Yeah, but it's the best quality. One, it is. Yeah. By far. And it's a single panel, which is nice, a lot of the twin panel. So we're gonna mount it as close as we can to the edge of the rack, but towards the awning side, because this side we can have storage, and at the back we've got storage, but then that- Down that side again? Surfboards. He doesn't say, he doesn't think I'm gonna go surfing. I am gonna go surfing. No, I didn't say you weren't gonna go surfing. You just keep saying you're gonna go surfing. I, well, you need to think ahead. I've known you for years now, like a good 20 years. <laughs> 
And I've never seen you with a surf on the roof of your car. Ever. Because I, I had a rooftop tent in my car. Yeah, I'm not denying you've got a surfboard on the same you never, never used. Anyway, we're rambling. Let's weld in this angle. Let's get that in. Put the awning on. We've got to spray it. We've got to find mounts where we're going to put the lights. Yep. And we've got a lot. So there we have it, episode seven. What an absolute stinker. We built a bespoke roof rack for the van and a ladder on the rear that will support the spare wheel. Here's a little sneak peek of what wheels and tires I'm going for on the van. Oh man, how sexy are those things, dude? Welcome back, you beautiful people, and welcome to my van build series. I'm gonna be showing you snippets of my whole journey, the ups, the downs, the funny bits, and not to forget all my mistakes as well. I've literally messed up. Blood, sweat, and tears is going to make this the ultimate mountain biker's van. This is my most ambitious project I've ever done. At a young age, I've always been into camping, overlanding, and mountain biking. Now, it's all about taking my family on adventure and just being in the gray outdoors. This, my friends, is Blake Bill's van life, powered by Works Tools. Welcome back, you beautiful people, and welcome to the final episode of Blake Bill's van life. The van is nearly there. It's actually been a while. Um, it's actually taken a sidestep, to be honest. Uh, I've been traveling all over the world. Martin has been very busy, but he has finished the roof rack. You can see this wire's hanging out. We'll get to that in this episode. But he's been an absolute wealth of knowledge, Martin has been, at Bare Metal Builds on Instagram. Go give him a follow because he does some incredible stuff. I couldn't have done it without him. Anyway, this episode, like I said, is the final one. There's so much going on in this episode. It's gonna be a whopper. And I actually don't like the, uh, the color of the van. It's all coming up in this episode. Oh, stick around, right? I'm over here in the garage if you wanna come. See ya. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Solar panel, 330 watt vent. It activates with the, the rain. As soon as it starts raining, it closes itself. We've got decking planks up here. The awning is in. Martin doesn't think I'm gonna store a surfboard up here, but I am gonna put a surfboard. But he had to buy this thing so he could get it on and off by himself because he is a one-man band and he just does everything on his own, which is pretty incredible anyway. Right, let's go back down and uh, actually help with wiring. Okay, so it's like an absolute snake's wedding behind here. I've connected up my mission control so that is all connected, all in the back here. It looks nuts. Look at this. Organized chaos, I say. Holy moly bummels. I will tidy it up. I will make it look snazzy. Now I just gotta go down there into the workshop and connect it to the fuse board to bring power all up here. That is next. Oh, but actually I'm gonna carpet this other panel. Then this top section's like finished. Blake was just asking me what cables we're using and um, we've got 17 amp cable and we've got 13 amp cable so we're making sure that all the main circuits, lighting circuits are running on at least 13 amp and anything else to do with the split charge relay um, and uh, so the switches and the main earths at the back of the van are all 17 amp so we're 100% covered by the thickness of a cable. You can see how thick that is, look at that. Ooh. Nothing in the back is going to be any more than probably 8 or 9 amps but when everything's turned on together it might go to 12 or 13. Everything will be fused anyway. So there's a little fuse board you can't see but there is a little fuse board in there. So my job is to put this battery computer so we know what the voltage and everything's going on in the batteries as well as this guy. Not, the, not this guy. This guy, it's a kill switch for the battery. And what we're gonna do, well, Mr. Jones has suggested that we cut off the earth to the van. Makes sense to me, so we're gonna do that. And that's gonna go in the panel as well. So these three items, 
in that. Yeah. So it's not particularly exciting this side, but I'll show you anyway. So you've got a split charge relay, which goes through a fuse that comes from the battery into the relay, out the relay to the main battery. This is the live feed then to the inverter. And you've got the earth coming down to the battery. So we're keeping the earth of the battery away from the body. We're gonna earth it at the back for a switch. And you've got the ring main for the actual um, hookup for the outside. That goes to the plugs that are there. And then you've got, this will be an earth. So all the earths will come out of the same buzz bar rather than loaded connectors. That's for the lives. That's for the fuses for all the switches. So there you go. Ready to go. Ready to go. We've cut the earth from the van. So when I tw twist this and turn it off, it kills the van. There you go. And I can take it out. And now the van is completely safe. It's locked down. Put that back in. Turn it back on. It's all coming along very nicely, but come in the garage because that is the best bit. Like I said, been very busy. We've painted the roof rack and I've painted the ladder on the rear, which is looking incredible. A bit dark in here. No, it's not. Check this out. Oh, and work lights. So when I'm packing the van up on a dark winter's day, I can turn them on. Oh wait. I can turn them on. <laughs> Look at that, amazing. And this is in. Yeah, not much power in the battery, but solar panel will charge that very soon. Um, so I've also hardwired in a works charging battery charger. That actually works. And that should come on. There we go. I've wired it up, all of it's in, it's flashing blue. There we go, flashing blue. Now to connect to the app, which I've done, I've worked it out, I've changed my, my password to it. It's saying I've got 12.4 volts in this battery right here, but I am gonna connect the two up. When it flashes green, it means it's floating, so I can flick a switch and I can start trickle charging that one on the other side of the van, which is pretty clever. It, Wiring is a bit messy at the moment, but I am going to tidy it up when I'm finished doing all the wires. Now, the next bit is this bit. Start connecting every single one of my accessories to a fuse. So every single accessory like light, USB, every single USB will have a different fuse. That is the next job. As you can see, that side is boarded up. I'm finished with that side. I'm working on this side and we're nearly there. I am so happy with how the electrics has turned out. I've, I've never done it before, but Mr. Jones, Martin, Bare Metal Builds, 100% give him a follow, please, because he's been an absolute trooper, giving me the insights and know-how on how to wire up a van, because I would have not known. I would have watched so many YouTube videos, and I probably wouldn't have got this far anyway. But, look, reading lights, kitchen lights, and then this one, is a double pole, which means I can turn it off over there. So bedroom one is the top one. Actually, no, Be bedroom one is the bottom one. That's incredible. It's time to start insulating in here and putting the ceiling in. So I've got some Kingspan, which is this, I think it's 25 mil or 35 mil. Anyway, it's this thick and it's gonna fit inside these squares. So I'm gonna cut them, put them in there, put them all in here that's all going to be insulated from the garage because I didn't insulate the garage because you don't need to and it'll be a waste anyway I am so happy with this look at that lights out
the wiring is complete. Now, as you can see, I've got paper everywhere strapped in here. I've primed all those steel. I've covered up all the little holes that need to be covered. I'm ready to Raptor spray the whole of this garage. Whole inside of the garage is gonna change color. It's gonna look incredible. It's gonna be watertight. And then I can wait overnight. And I'm gonna put in my drawer sliders. I fepping cannot wait. I that is one massive step for Blake. One massive step for Blake. One massive step for man. Right, enough chip chat. Well, yeah, because we're playing outside in the rain, basically. Because <laughs> that's professional, isn't it? Very professional. Van life is always outside. You ready? Can I just go for it? Yeah, paint, paint the van. Should I wear a mask? Should I wear a mask? I think I should wear a mask. <laughs> Smells funny. Early. got my porridge. Um, it is the next day. It's like quite a sporadic episode, this one, because it is the last one and there's a lot going on. Anyway, got my porridge. Come with me. Right, now it's time to install one of these drawers. You don't know how excited I am right now because this is basically like the cherry on the top inside the garage. Oh my gosh, I'm tired, but let's, let's get the kids. Here it is. Let's see. The ply, guys. You're so kind. Oh, I know what these are. The little cubby holes, which they went way beyond my expectations. I, I sent them drawings and these, oh, look at that. These will just fit in the back. So this is for the big drawer. Oh, excited. Excited! Excited! Right, need to install my, my plugs, my sockets. Need to put these in. When the van was completely empty. I remember that. Switches, garage, number three, USB. I remember you spelled USB wrong. Oh, yeah, I spelled that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's because I'm diabetic. <laughs> Dyslexic. Yeah, you get, you get it. <laughs> That's Hyper why. Hyperaxis. Oh, scary. That's that's pretty strong. That's a pretty strong draw. I don't want to stand over there, I'm scared. But that's pretty strong. Wow. I'm gonna screw in one here because it looks like it's bowing out there. It just feels a bit tight. The drawer's really hard to get in and out. It slides really bad. And where I've screwed it, it's trying to push it down, but because it's got these ridges here, to make it obviously a lot stronger so it doesn't just bend down, that's why they do that. It goes on there and then pushes away, so it pushes it away like a little ramp. So I'm gonna put some spaces under there, then that should sit quite flush. I was thinking, why is it not closing properly? I was really in, then I was like, hang on a minute. It's actually bent, so there you go. Can I have another coffee? Oat latte, please. Buy a Dunkin' Manier. Oh, hey, Nick. Thanks very much, dude. Was that hot? <laughs> your, your face is like, ah. Oh, merci beaucoup, monsieur. No, they're definitely all mine. No, no. There you go. Oh, yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Oh my flipping goodness. That was, that was ridiculously easy. I should build vans for a living. No, I don't want to build vans for a living. Actually, this is my first ever van I've ever built. It was hard. I feel like the second one will be easy. Third one will be like, oh, dude, I'm going to build 10 after this. <laughs> but no, watch this. Okay. Oh, wait, we need some tools. <laughs> I think I've said this before, but I designed it so we could put tools in here. So you can get this toolbox foam and you can actually cut out little inserts for each individual tool. So they're gonna be there. Here is where the bikes are gonna go. So you can actually use this as a work stand. When the bikes are off, you can put bits in here. Now this wasn't my idea. This was Hamish's idea at the ply guys. He said, dude, you've got wasted space there. Why not put cubbies in there? So he's put two in for me. He went beyond. Thank you very much. Like I said, at the ply guys on Instagram. Slide it in, slide it out, slide it in, slide it out until I go to bed. Because it's amazing. Right, garage is complete. This is kind of the next two days after the garage was done because I've been in here. Stressing, this is probably the stressiest I've been in the build. Actually, work is the, I'm the tiredest. Anyway, it's tongue and groove. It looks incredible when it's up, but holy moly, I am putting glue in the groove and then sliding it in. So, because this is probably gonna be quite creaky if you don't do it and set it properly. So I'm gluing it onto the ceiling and I'm gluing it into the groove and the tongue and groove, but it's, it looks really good. And then when you put it in there, just slide it up onto that tongue. But this is the stressful bit. Oh. Watch this. <laughs> Watch me get very cross. Watch me get very cross. Bro, you threw one yesterday. So last night I was here till quite late. Saying late, there's, there's it there. And I launched it there, through there, and I never said the F word so loud in my life. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. This is a anti creak noise, I hope. Oh, I've got some more jeans. I'm tired. Just forget about me. I'm crying. I've got more, more on my crutch. Oh, more. It's actually quite emotional, this bit. I'm super tired and the ceiling's going in. It's supposed to be like good times, you know, but it's yeah, quite emotional. Quite emotional right now. Oh, I'd love a cup of tea, Nick, yes. Nick's just asked me for a, a hot beverage and I, cup of tea, Nick. Thank you. I'll be done here. Oi, thanks, Nick. Oh, it's a good cup of tea, thank you. I got to do the back bits, put two more lights in, sort out this, and then the ceiling's done. I'm excited. Now I can put the lights on and see. That, to be honest, stressed me out quite a lot, because I thought it would be quite straightforward, but it's not. But it looks beautiful. Very aeronautical. Aeron aeronautical. What am I saying? What am I saying? Let me repeat that. Hang on. Very... Nautical, there, there you go. It's very nautical though, thanks Nick. What Nick said looks like a Swedish sauna. Kinda, yeah, I like it. It's finished. <laughs> ah, that's my favourite machine. But it works, though. 
Watch my ceiling, don't dent it. Watch my wires, please. Watch my RGB. Watch that one there. Ah. Right, moment of truth. Let's see if the van burns down because we put more wood in it. Watch this. <laughs> wow! Actually looks quite good. I did just that off camera. I was like, I was like, go get the computer, just go and connect and turn the lights on. And they turned on and I went, oh yeah, that's really cool. Because that was so stressful to do. Four hours to do those bits there and this. Two hours to do and then bit. with two people, two it's people. half the job. It's Basically like three people, I've got to be honest. But we did this, look how nice this is. Yeah, that, that, this, yeah, to be honest, one cut wonder over here, Mr. Jones. Yeah. It would have taken me thousands and I would have thrown no, it's, everything. It's nice and neat, I like it. To be honest, yeah, because in a couple of days, we are going to do something with the outside of the van because everything in here is pretty much there. doesn't look like it, but it is. But it is. Anyway, <laughs> go to bed. Now I'm going to go shoot the Dirt Shed show and I'm going to come back on Thursday because I'm, I'm away. After you. I've actually cleared up and okay. Nick's actually I'm swept up. There you are. <laughs> Yes, welcome back to this week's show. Joined with myself, Blake Sampson. We've got Chris Smith from yep. EMBN, and we've got someone on the sofa. Watcha, how you there doing? There he is. Yes, I had to shoot off to go and film the weekly show that we do every Friday. So, this Friday, Friday the 21st, I'm gonna be announcing all the giveaways. The 10 runner-ups to the Hydro Shot, and the big prize winner of all of those tools that I mentioned in the previous episode. It's all coming up in tomorrow's show, so stick around and watch it because it could be you. You've got a lot more energy today, mate. We've got a lot more energy today. Yeah, me today, but it's only because I'm doing stuff and he's not. No, because it's, I get so overwhelmed with how much stuff I've got well, to do. Well, just get on with it. I am, but I'm just it's like, oh my gosh, it's ticking, you know? Everyone loves a bit of freehand work, worktop fitment, don't they? <laughs> I'd absolutely love it. Right, what's happened now? How much did I take off? How many have you got now? 30. I moved it by four mil, how can it be 30? I've moved it four mil now, you can't, don't say 29. 28. Your measuring tape don't work, does it? 28. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, make sure that goes in. Yours is, yours is different, right? Okay, from there, yeah. Mine definitely says 24 there, look. Yours says... 23. <laughs> Mine says, okay. We should use one tape we'll measure. We'll use one tape measure, because that's definitely different. Don't use this when doing that, right? I'll do this over that's, here. Yeah, you do that over there. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, do you... Can you, do you take card? I'll pop down, I'm only up the road. All right, see ya, bye. Yes. yes. Got a tap, she, he, she, he said, it went from a she to a he. He said they're re like really small. Yeah. So I think that's perfect, really small for them. Because it hasn't got a switch on it. Did someone forget to order a tap? I forgot to order a tap. I literally, you know, no, I put my hands up. I literally thought I could go to local DIY store and buy a tap. Anyway, no worry. I'll, bye, Blake. I'll go get one. Yeah. Okay. The color of this tap, right, is definitely OMP or retired. Good to get out though. Let's see how. Cup of tea, Nick, when we get in. Is that right? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Look at this. This is it. Bit of bit of move. Bit of bit of bit of bit of bit of bit of movement there. Bit of movement. Well, it's not but actually it's, mounted yet. It's not mounted, but it's in. And that. Cooking my eggs, yeah. cooking my bacon. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look like you're cooking bacon. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in there. Oh, that looks good actually. It's really small, it's tucked away. I like it. You can get some tiles on there. <sighs> All the best things come in small packages, eh? But yeah, that's it, Mark. Yeah. 
definitely a big hole there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm going all hot and sweaty. It's a mistake that Blake looks happy about. No, no. <laughs> Oh, we can fill it. I know we can fill it. It'll be fine. The only reason Blake's happy about it is because I made the mistake, it. and I've now got to make the hole worked up again. Really? Well, that's a that's a big hole, Blake. That is a big hole. But we can fill it, and then I look at it and go, oh, I remember that day. <laughs> that day was. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Let's get number seven. Hang on. <laughs> Nick, the cameraman's going to get sacked in a minute. Get get a number seven. Why? Why can't I just turn it on like that? Uh, go for it. Try it. Try it. What's going to happen? I have no idea. <laughs> you probably should go. Try it. Because it could spin and smash me in the face. M probably not. No, it won't. What? Get ready to turn it off. You don't want to test it. Well, no. It is. On what? On what? Oh, it's do so it. scary, oh, this machine. I don't want to do it. This could be really dangerous. I could end up bleeding here. Yeah. But try it. If it spins on the top, I'm because I can't switch it oh, off. It's so deep. Look. What? Oh, I don't oh. want to do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, close, isn't it? Imagine that snagging now. <laughs> oh! I can't do it. <laughs> My finger won't even push the button. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, that hole's big. I'm hearing Nick doing some noises. Nick, oh, he's ripping my van going apart. Going back to episode one, man. Just breaking you stuff off. You're ripping my van apart, Nick. <laughs> this is Nick, everyone. He's the guy that films everything, and he's been editing the whole series. So, it's big up, good. Nick. It's been a lot of fun. It's me. been a lot of good fun. A lot of yeah. outtakes as well. A lot of outtakes. Do that again, sorry, Nick. Let me do that again, Nick. I'm gonna say that again, Nick. I'm gonna do that again. But Nick is uh, ripping my van apart. Try to be careful with it, Nick. You're breaking it. You're breaking it, Nick. No, I learned how to break it. I learned from the best, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick. Yeah. You broke this one. Anyway, thanks, Nick. You're saving me some time. So Martin's trying to explain that I made a boo-boo. But so you sent a message saying, here's the stuff you need. I rung up, I said medium. Yeah. Because I mean, Martin said medium. But we ended up getting normal. Normal. Which means which slow. Slow. So last night we were painting the panels and uh, with the lacquer, yeah. you have to wait between coats about 20 minutes-ish for it to go tucky. It wouldn't go tucky and it I couldn't work out why. He was getting super annoyed, he was getting super cross well, because it was why was seven? It? Anyway, AK Pat, car commander Pat, he's, uh, he's given us this. Five minute, not 45 Five minute. minute. Five minute. Five minutes. What do they call this? I actually don't know. I do know, I do know what to do. So basically you, you run a, a black over guide it, coat. a guide coat, and then when you wet it, not like wet sand it, if you still see black in the paint, the bits you've sanded, that means that's, there's a low spot in that. Basically take away all the black and that'll give you a nice smooth surface.
we are using some GMBN socks. Thanks to Nick. Thanks, Nick. It smelled great. <gasps> Look what's arrived. Go get that. Go get. Go get it right there. It's my tyres. I feel very blessed dude, so lucky man. All these people helping me out. To be honest, the van needs to be out of the garage and we are nearly finished, but it's a big ask for just Martin and I sanding on all these panels. The budget is nearly done, but we are actually nearly done. I wanna be sat in it, enjoying it. Not in a traffic jam, but it doesn't matter. If we're in a humongous one stuck for ages, I'll just get in the back and make a cup of tea. Cut a tea, Nick, cut a tea. So there we have it, end of episode eight. This is the final episode of building. It doesn't look like we're finished, but we are pretty much nearly there. As you can see, the Paint's colors go for like five minutes, blur the colors because we want it to be a reveal, a reveal. Yeah. Orange, yellow, pink, black. Pink, everyone's saying pink. Right. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode. If you've missed out on previous episodes, there's a playlist linked in the description down below. Go over there and binge watch it because it's pretty fun. It's been an absolute journey. It's been a year, over a year. I don't even know what to say. I, I, I'm grambling. It's been it's emotional. Been, it's been very emotional. It's been emotional. It has been very emotional. Yeah, it's been emotional. It's been good. But Thank we are still much. friends, just. <laughs> cup, cup of tea. Cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, cup of tea. See ya. Bye. Oh, 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 oh. Don't forget to come back because we're going to do a grand reveal and there'll be a full walk around of the van. Questions and answers from Mr. Martin Jones and myself. Bare Metal Builds, go follow them on Instagram. There do we go. It, go, go, do it! I dare ya. I dare you too. We... <laughs> welcome back, you beautiful people, and welcome to the grand reveal of the ultimate mountain biking van. This is my interpretation of that. Some of you have been waiting so long for this. Some of you, welcome to my new van. But it's not finished, but it is, but it'll never be finished, will it? You're always adding something. But anyway, let's crack on.
Yes, it is finally finished. The most common question I get asked constantly on my social media and in when I'm, when I'm out on the trail is, when's the van finished? How's the van build going? When's the next video? All those questions is finally here and you can tell by the color of the van is totally different. It's not a white van. The color is RAL 250 6010. That's the color of this, but uh, I absolutely love it. It's neutral, it's humbling, it's earthy. It just blends in with the surroundings. I'm rambling, but this took a long time to spray and I couldn't do it without this gentleman. Martin Jones, a man of many talents in the motoring industry. He can fix anything and everything. His knowledge is second to none when it comes to building campers. Well, basically anything really. He even helped me build a bespoke bike rack. Check this out. Bro, we got Martin with us, look. Well, yeah. Mr. Bare Metal builds himself. We, I couldn't actually do it without you, Mr. Jones. No, you couldn't. To be fair, you did bring me a, I a did bring that. That is a oh. limited edition oh. adventure hoodie. It's very warm. Yeah, it's nice, bro. especially with a coat on it. The van, the van. Jeff the van. This is yeah. probably the, the first thing we bought. It was the first well, it was thing. You, first you thing was it. the grill. But uh, it was no easy task to change the color of this van to this RAL 250 6010. I should get a hashtag RAL 250 I don't know why you keep telling people the name of it, but anyway. Everyone will I paint everything that color now. I sound techie, but look at it. It didn't take us just one day to paint this, did it? It took a us a whole a week. A whole week. And we finished doing the clear coat on it at half past one in the morning. I actually really chuffed with the color. It's a really good color. And we have done a really good job of painting inside the door shuts as well, so yeah. the whole van's changed colour. It's yes. not just a little bit or the outside. All inside the bonnet, everywhere is all painted grey. You can open the door and it'll be the same colour. We um, wrapped it all the plastics all over the van, which I I think is a great great idea. I think well, it makes a huge super difference. Super durable. Yeah, yeah, it's all durable now. Here are the wheels. I love the wheels. I went for all terrains just to make it look a bit more rugged rugged chunky chunky the roof itself because it was actually martin's idea because of overspray when lacquering the van we didn't want it to spray over the side and get to one side to the other blah 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 yeah because you can't paint the whole van in one go because it's too much that's so why it took us to one we end. had to basically took the doors off took the wings off took everything off of it painted everything on the inside then painted the van and then painted all the doors so to then paint the roof afterwards, it would have got overspray over everything we just done. Even if we did mask it off, it still would have got in there. So we wrapped it, but I got a tintable raptor. What colour is it again? It's RAL 250 6010. And again? Uh, RAL 250 6010. Nice. So the roof is the same colour as the van, it's but the it's actually color. wrapped, so you can spill things on it. Branches can hit it, hit it, won't rip the paint off. Which is, it's an adventure wagon. So when I'm out of the honeymoon, <clears throat> honeymoon stage, I don't mind scratching it that much. <laughs> You're out there already, aren't you? No. Right, enough of the colour of the van because it's RAL 250 6010. <laughs> Follow us because there's more over here. Hashtag. Hashtag, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Jeff's back end. Look at the ass on that. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> we got a ladder bespokely built. We actually built the ladder on the back of the door but off the van on its side. Yeah, on, it doesn't get more bespoke down. than that. We literally made it while in on the back of the door. Exactly, and we wanted to have the spare wheel in the back because what we've done underneath is removed the spare wheel and put in a 17 litre freshwater tank that basically feeds the sink in the front, feeds my shower, and feeds my pressure washer when the bikes are dirty. I can pressure wash them before. Plenty of H2O. It. It's loads of H2O. The main attraction for the van on the outside, apart from the color, RAL 250 6010, is the roof rack. <laughs> <laughs> it's the roof rack, and that is this guy's brainchild. Yeah, made the feet to mount the roof, and then made the roof rack fit the van. We've got a 330 watt solar panel that is feeding two leisure batteries with inside the van, which we'll come to in a minute. The best thing about the van is the illuminations that this thing has. Take a look at this in the dark. I think the, I'm not going to be scared of the dark anymore. <laughs> Moving on to the garage. Now this is my favorite bit. Got to fit it up. Look at it. Look at that. Hey, that's beautiful. So big thanks. There's three British companies that are now really good friends of mine. The Ply guys, they were like, he messaged me and he was like, hey man, I want to build you the units for the sliders in the back of your van for your bikes. And I was like, huh, really? Uh, how much are they? And he was like, no, I really appreciate what you've been doing, blah, blah, blah. 
big fans of the channel and we want to give you these the ply guys hamish is an incredible dude and uh he came up with this and he went beyond really by putting in two more cubby holes here and i did want this came up it's nice i like put, it put the tools in yeah i got my toe peak i got park tools there loaded bikes they got hold of me on my social media and uh sent me a message saying we've got the perfect product for your ply guy drawers system to hold your bikes and these are from helen and dom two beautiful people that have uh, given me basically all the things i need to load my bikes in the back of the van got a combi boiler and look at that got that in there so as soon as you flick a switch in the in the front to wash your dishes it sends it to here it releases the pressure and basically starts the boiler combi boiler and then you've got hot water there but i've also got an outlet right here which basically is for my shower and this Thank one is for pressure washer so it sucks water straight out of the tank it is it's just basically the works power tool is the pump for that so it pumps it out of the yeah, tank yeah so it sucks it up sucks it up spray your bikes down and this is all sealed in here so when this is running you don't get any gases inside the van so we've got two batteries in the back one runs the inside of the van one runs the back of the van so they're separate so if you do flatten this one you can still live inside the van we've also got a 240 volt inverter which you can see there at the currently 12 volts but there's 240 volts down here the top one is from the inverter the bottom one is from the fly lead on the outside so you can plug it into the mains and then it will charge both the batteries from a charger but it'll also charge when you drive down the road so you can charge an e-bike as well that's the main reason why we split them so there's enough power coming from here to be able to charge an e-bike whilst you're driving down the road and those batteries disconnect from the main van battery so you can't flatten the battery on the van and i thought it would take six months to build i knew it would take longer because it was so bespoke the whole van is completely bespoke there's no there's been no, no measurements done apart you know, from nothing's drawn before things. That's the only things we had to work to, basically, yeah. was the size of the bikes as well was another thing we had to yeah, work to. Yeah. And the bed. And the bed. Yeah. We cut a window in on this side, and the other side is a opening sliding window. Yeah. And uh, we've just been speaking now, and we were like, why didn't we should have had this? Because the window. kitchen is behind oh, here, kitchen. which you'll see. Yeah. The kitchen is behind you, so why wouldn't you have a sliding window? We worked out because I left Blake to order them. Your I, I ordered them. Anyway, first things off when you come into the van, you've got the floor that's super dirty, but I is getting used this van. But it is a heavy duty, oh, yeah. non slip floor. It is. Come, come to my crib. So everything that you see in this living room wouldn't be able to be possible without starting off in the garage because that's where we had to start yeah to so build we, had, this. we had to work out what the limitations were we're limited by the overall space mm -hmm. but ultimately we had to get a double bed in here and we had to get the bikes in yeah so we had to measure the back with the bikes that so the longest bike i could the longest one running. yeah then that meant how far forward the bulkhead went now the bulkhead is steel the reason why it's steel is because it's ultra safe so if blake were to accidentally bump into something then everything inside the garage will not come through that bulkhead it's solid steel bulkhead frame and that's why the seats are meant mounted to it as well but then the angle of the seat yeah. forms part of the back of the garage that gives you the back of the seat already but everything in here is completely bespoke made to this van whilst we were making it basically exactly nothing was come from another van we didn't design anything we didn't measure anything and check what would fit another usb right here in the whole van we have two four six eight we have eight usbs now when it comes to the wiring in this yeah there was a lot of wiring now, i'm talking about the usbs because i've basically got a spreadsheet on my phone with every single color of what each accessory is and um each usb port in this van is individually fused so all the stuff for the inside of the van in here is fused on that side of the van behind the heat vent so you take the air vent out and you can see all the fuses um, the fridge is relayed everything it needs draws more power is relayed but also which a lot of people will fail to do is everything is individually earthed so each light inside the van each switch each everything or everything that's electric has got its own individual earth going straight to an earth bar down by the battery and also it means if one light fails it's just that one light that will fail everything else will stay working and if it does all go then you know it's the fuse but it's future proof safety it is future -proof. everything about it i mean it's, it's way over the top it takes twice as long to do but you're not taking half the van apart to try and fix it no 
big main switch panel is way up here. Now this blue light here, this took us a ages while. to work out and fix. But this is the kitchen unit right here. We've got a two burner hob right here. And over here, we've got the sink, which has got three dirty cups in it already. One, two, three. Yeah. We've had teas in here. So we've got a cold water tap. We've got the hot water tap, which is connected to the boiler in the back, a combi boiler. So you just flick that switch and it actually releases pressure in it and then it kicks in. Yeah. But then the bottom of the sink, this bit, actually turns into a cutting board or even better, is more workspace, which I you can put that in there and you've got some more workspace if you need it. The bedroom. Like I said, this is a Euro spec size double bed. Look at this. And you're sleeping widthways in the van, oh, which is which is incredible. I didn't lose any more living space. And basically, if I had a, a bigger van, like a, a super jumbo long van, I probably would have slept like this and made the garage a little bit longer. But in here, we've got mood lighting. We've got blue lighting there and blue lighting under here. So there's two USB there and two on here. So I can charge phones or have a an iPad or whatever. So this is an, an absolute find from our Scandinavian friends, Ikea. Friends. Look at that. So this under here are the just normal double bed slats. slats. Yeah. This bit over here, which I'll come to in a minute, is the base to this second bed down there for my two little boys. And it's comfy, memory foam it is. It actually cost me an absolute fortune. It was like 300 and something quid for a mattress for a van. Right down there storage which is uh quite hard to do when it comes to a small space you've got to utilize quite a lot of the space to make it roomy but have storage so i've got three overhead storages over here this one is for the kitchen those two over there will be for clothing um then coming down over here we've got this one here which is again for the kitchen and this one is for clothes which is is full of clothes look at that right the lounging area now as you can see, blue, this is, this is denim. I actually made these. I watched an, an elderly lady on YouTube to show me how to make box cushions with zips so I can take the covers off and wash them and put them back because I've got two boys and they are going to be messy. This one actually is the cushion or the base for the, for the bed that will come out here, which I'll show you in a little second. But behind this big cushion, are these items, these are Isofix mounts, which are welded to the steel bulkhead that we've got here. There's like box section all in here, and we've welded these to it. So it's not gonna move and that's super safe. So my two kid seats just basically click in there and we can drive off. And with storage under there, we've got that big trunk. We've got storage under here with these two cubbies. This one gets used a hell of a lot because my gas is under here. Uh, and my isolator switch is under there and if anything else goes wrong I can get in there as well as if something bigger goes wrong under there these are two access panels so I can take this one out here to look in to see if anything has gone wrong but if something major has gone wrong which I hope it doesn't I can take this one off and this and I can remove the fridge and whatever is in there but then underneath here we've got other storage this is the, the trunk where I keep my my 25 meter hookup cable which basically hooks into the side of the van. I've got the leg to the bed. So this is the leg for this bed, which I will show you right now. So I basically four-way stretch the whole of the inside of the van with this black carpet and this stuff. I went through so many tins of spray and meters and meters of this stuff and it's not cheap. It complements the outside of the van with the inside with all the black and I've done it everywhere and I like it. The, uh, the blinds in this are from again our Scandinavian friends from Ikea but Mark he came up with this brilliant idea of uh, using trunking for cables so it doesn't move. It doesn't move in there. It doesn't wobble no, or hit the window. Otherwise it will flap in at the window. Exactly. All right. We've done a lot of chatting. I reckon I'm going to make a sandwich. You want a sandwich? Do it. I'm sandwich. 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 <laughs> no, 
up here is another little storage spot and then above the driver's seat and passenger seat where Martin is. Um, this here is basically just is for dumping ground, jackets, kids things, camera equipment mainly because I've got two USB ports right here. Look at that, two USB ports right here. So I can charge my GoPros or cameras and all that rad jazz. And then down here where Martin is, is my Hoover, a works Hoover that lives in the van so I need to keep it clean and hoover up crumbs from the kids. And then you've got a 240 hookup uh, double socket and a inverter double socket. So I can charge the laptop or my camera equipment will be charged in there. And then where my, Martin's feet is, is the <laughs> diesel heater. It's nice, that's Which, why I'm sat here. Yeah. Because it's nice and warm. <laughs> anyway, the temperature in here at the moment is 18 degrees and out there is so about six. six. Yeah, it's lovely in here actually. I'm very nice, nice and toasty where I am now. But the best addition is the two seats, the swivel seats in the front that turn around, driver and passenger with head, with armrest. We have updated the stereo though. We you, have updated the stereo. You now have a fancy double din stereo with Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, everything built in. What is really nice is I did this. Utilized this plastic panel that USB wasn't actually there before. That is a cable that runs down to the back of the stereo. And I cut that out and glued it in there, so now it works like the Apple CarPlay system. That was nice, rather than having wires everywhere. Would you look at this? The Fiamma F45S awning. I actually purchased this thing. And you it did. was it was uh, rather pricey, but it's worth it. You can get a shower that fits on the inside and hangs. Yeah. And you have a little plate you stand on and you can have a shower outside. Yeah, now I do have lights in here, which is that one, is the awning light. I'll show you that. There. So I've got one, but I need another one. Yeah. Because I it, it leaves a big shadow over here where it casts off the corner there. So I've got another one of those lights. I'm gonna weld it underneath of that bit there. I might bring it out a bit so it's flush. But the wiring's there pretty the much. The wiring's there, I'll just basically splice into that one and then it's the same loom. You like splicing wiring? I like splicing. I got taught by someone very special. <laughs> Didn't electrocute yourself, so that's good. I did it, uh, mm, I did on the skylight, remember? Oh yeah, you did, yeah. Oh, you f that gave me a shot. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even plugged. Please tell me Isn't you it? got that. You get oh that. I got a shock, man. <laughs> it was a static shock, and oh yeah. my gosh, it nearly sent me off the roof. And I nearly like laughed off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> this is the penthouse suite. Now, I'm a big fan of the rooftop tent. Massive fan. Had one on Jeff, and I loved it. I spent the night in there in minus six degrees with my brother. Went on a 10 day holiday with our firstborn. 10 days we slept in a tent like this, but it was way more faffy to put up than this. This is next level, next level easy. The only pulls you do is this, that's it. Voila, it's just too good. Imagine coming up here Watch the sun go down with a cup of tea or a nice ice cold beverage. Then watch the sun come up. Well, actually, if I was parking south, you would get all of it. Just open these two windows. Oh yeah, there comes the sun. Oh yeah, there goes the sun. <laughs> Night. I can't thank Works Power Tools enough for their support throughout this build. Without these incredible cordless power tools, this build wouldn't be what it is today. I would also like to thank everyone that helped off camera, and not to forget you beautiful people who have been following my journey and with their helpful comments. It means a lot. Thank you. Can't believe it, mate. It's complete. It's, it's finished. It's finished, oh, nearly. I'm a man full of knowledge. I highly recommend you follow him at Bare Metal Builds. He's got some incredible projects coming. He's fresh in the game on the tube, but follow him, he's cool. And on his social media, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Because, hey, if you want a question answered, 
call I'll him. I'll try and answer it, whether it's right or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but look at it. Look at it. Javan. Was born. Was born. Resurrected from being a white van to that. Thank you very much for watching this incredible series. It's been uh, a roller coaster of emotions and everything and learning curve. And I cannot believe I just built this with the help of mine. But 